Shalom, shalom, saints. How are you doing? I greet you all in the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, trust you are all doing well by the grace of God. And even if you are not well, you will be well in Jesus' name. Sister Natasha Fogel. Shalom, shalom, Sister Myrna. How are you? Sister Portia Sleek. Good morning, my sister. Shalom, Paradigm Shift 22. Welcome back, beloved. Mrs. Erin. Shalom. Shalom, Brother Andrew. I'm happy to see you. Green. Shalom. The man Uzo. Shalom. Matimuya Kuhula. Shalom. Shalom, Sister Michelle. Shalom, 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 Sister Dawn. Shalom, Sister Roxy. Sister Rosalind. Shalom. Shalom, Brother Mac. How are you doing? Welcome back. Daddy Leo. Shalom. I'm glad to see you too. Welcome. Welcome, Sister Ebony. Coco. Welcome. Sister Gladys. Bonjour. Ma belle soeur. Shalom, Phyllis Mustafa. Shalom. Zira. Shalom, my sister. Shalom, shalom, Sister Beth. How are you, precious sister? Sister Titi Ture. Shalom, shalom, precious saints. Tell me your first. Shalom. Shalom, twin. Shalom, 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 hippie. Shalom, Amuti. Shalom, precious saints. Brother Livy William, shalom. Shalom, Sister Emily Jackson. How are you? Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. But you are back and I'm happy. Hallelujah. Genesis, shalom. Shalom, hippie tendencies. Shalom, Petula. Shalom, Sister Kita. I'm doing well, Sister Kita. Much better today by the grace of God. Sister China. Shalom. Sister Alice Jones. Shalom, my sister. Bon dia, Mantania. Shalom, Brother Edward. Shalom, 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 Sister Michelle 311083, shalom, 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 Sister Wendy, shalom, 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 I'm glad to see you back, Sister Emily Jackson, Sister Hebrew Girl, shalom, my precious sister, Sister Janet, welcome, shalom, 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 Sister Olivia, Brother Tyrone, shalom, it's been a long time. Brother Paulo Moor Conte, Shalom, Carjo, Shalom, 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 Precious Saints, Car X, Shalom, 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 Dr. Ada, Shalom, Precious Saints, Seth, Adu, Shalom, Brother Seth, Shalom, 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 Saints, Shalom, Misa Torah, Shalom, Thai. Shalom, precious saints. And as you join in yesterday, some of you were upset because I left the live stream because somebody knocked on my door. I want to say this to you. There are road works being uh, conducted on my road. They are digging. So you're going to sometimes hear a lot of noise. And not only that, if you hear children crying, toddlers babies they're not mine i have a kindergarten or what we call here in england a nursery school right in front of my house so whatever goes on in there it you know it doesn't matter even if i close the windows you will still hear some noise and commotion going on outside and if the noise bothers you and you cannot you know tolerate the noise i will totally understand if you want to leave but there is no need to be rude and disrespectful life happens and you know this platform is genuine i'm not here to pretend to be something i'm not what you see with me is what you get but some of you prefer pretenders people who um Pretend to be something that I'm not. I'm not good at that. I've never been good at that. So if you are not happy because there is noise, there is whatever, then leave. And don't torment those who want to stay and are here genuinely to support the furtherance of the gospel by being here. And not only that, by, you know, gathering as saints. Even if you go to church, sometimes the mothers have to take their children out because they are misbehaving or crying. And the pastor will still carry on with the service. Am I not right, saints? Hallelujah. 
So precious saints, the title for this live stream is Exposing the Occult in Jesus' Name. Unfortunately, saints of Almighty God, the occult has infiltrated the Christian world. The occult has found its way and crept in into our churches, um, institutions, charities, whatever it is. It is a fact, whether you like it or not, um, it is what it is. But our duty as believers is to expose everything that is in the occult, is to expose everything that is in darkness. That is why the gospel is preached. And that is why Christians are persecuted. That's why Christians all around the world are always under attack, especially the genuine ones, the ones that have understanding. Okay, so I'm here today. So help me God to expose um, the works of darkness. So get your Bibles ready, um, pen and paper, because you're going to need to write down some scriptures. And I'm going to give you practical examples so that you can situate yourself, you know, in this time that we are living. Because I'll tell you what, saints, if you are not studying the word of God, you are not paying attention and you are not allowing the Holy Spirit to take you on a journey. You will be serving the devil unknowingly, but you are serving him. Do you see, do you see what I'm saying? Um, back in the day, saints, there was a certain division, a certain separation between the holy and the profane. Okay, but not anymore. You will go to churches and they are twerking just like they do in clubs. The way they are dressed, the way the pastors speak, everything, it's worldly. And it didn't just start it like that. No. Slowly but surely, the devil began to introduce wickedness among us, among our world in our midst and some of us here we are unfortunately suffering under the power of the occult because we simply don't understand that is the occult because we've been brainwashed in churches we've been brainwashed by christian programs we've been brainwashed by christian influences to think that that is normal there are witches now that brand themselves as christian witches there are anti-clockwise people that brand themselves as Christian anti-clockwise. There are things that are being justified in our pulpits, in our gatherings, um, for the sake of tolerance, acceptance, and God knows what else. But I'm not here to bore you with so much talking. I just wanted to introduce the topic for today while you all log in. And I want you to situate you exactly on the topic and so that you will know what the Holy Spirit is going to minister today. We are going to consecrate this live stream unto the Lord. And let me remind you that our fasting saints ends on the 31st, right? But the Holy Communion will take place tomorrow because that is the day that should be held. So I'm sure you all have your matzo bread ready, your grape juice. I bought mine already. It's already there waiting for us. I want to remind you, saints, that Fridays, which is this Holy Friday, will as usual be consecration day. Don't miss it. Bring everything that you want to consecrate to God this Friday and it will be done. I want to encourage you, saints, as well. That as you are fasting on these last final days of our corporate fasting, um, ask God for discernment, ask God for wisdom, ask God to be filled with the Holy Spirit because saints, we are living in terrible days. And the enemy is out there with great fury against 
the saints. It is not after they're out there uh, after the phony and the liars and the false prophets. The devil is after there to devour the saints. So we need to have a certain knowledge and intimacy with the Holy Spirit in order to be able to survive these last days. So precious saints, let us consecrate this live stream unto the Lord. I have very good news. Today I'm home and this live stream will not be limited to time. So I have plenty of time today to be here with you until much later. So glory be to God. And it will be like that for 15 days because that is the time my children will be off from school on the Easter break. Okay, so that is good news. Our live streams are not going to be um, limited to time. All right. Um, let us pray. Father Lord, I thank you for your presence today. I thank you for bringing us together once again, Lord God, into this live stream. I thank you for your Holy Spirit that is constantly guiding us, that is constantly leading us into the path of righteousness. And moreover, I thank you for the Holy Spirit that will not allow us to rest in our sin but is bringing constant convi conviction to our hearts, our souls, and our spirits about the need of repentance, the need to follow you, the need to make things right before it's too late. Father, Lord, I thank you, because as we are about to begin this holy week, Lord God, we are reminded of the sacrifice of our Lord Jesus on the cross of Calvary for the remission of our sins. And we ask you, Almighty God, that you will forgive us. That you will remember that blood that was shed on the cross of Calvary. And that you will remember, Father Lord, the covenant established by your Son upon that cross. So that we could be free today. So that we could inherit the gift of life, of eternal life. So that we could be forgiven. Father Lord, and I'm asking you, forgive us after 50 generations before us, Lord God. And be merciful, cleanse our bloodlines, cleanse our DNA with the precious blood of your son, Jesus. Allow the blood of your son, Jesus, blot out every transgression, blot out every iniquity. And moreover, allow the Holy Spirit, Lord God, to deal with our hearts. Allow the blood of Jesus, Father Lord, to purify our thoughts and bring us closer and closer and closer to you, Lord God. Father Lord, and as we gather here as a congregation. We pray for strength. We pray for discernment, Lord God, that we will not be led astray by demonic doct doctrines, doctrines of demons, that we will not be deceived by the enemy at these very last days, Lord God, that we, will, Father Lord, be on alert, that, Father Lord, we will be quick to see what is of you and what is not of you, Lord God. And, Father, we consecrate this live stream into your hands, asking you to find expression in our midst, asking you to speak to us, Father Lord, like you have never spoken before, asking you, Father Lord, to manifest your presence, Lord God, so that we can, Father Lord, understand your will and your purpose for us. And not only that, that we will be able to obey always, even if it costs us something, even if it's difficult, even if we don't understand it, that we will obey, Lord God. Because obedience is better than sacrifice. Almighty God, King of glory, everlasting Father, I'm asking you that you begin to bind every demon, every evil spirit, Lord God, that is trying to sabotage our lives, this ministry, our gathering here, creating all sorts of problems that people cannot join, creating division, creating, Father Lord, oppression, creating, Father Lord, dissensions, Lord God, and, and make people behave, Father Lord, in a way that is not godly. Father Lord, bind these evil spirits spirits with everlasting chains of your Holy Ghost fire and cast them all onto the bottomless pit of the abyss forever and ever so that they won't have any more access to our lives, to the live stream and to our children. Lord Jesus, I envelope each one of us and children and family members with your precious blood. 
Lord Jesus, I saturate our environment, Father Lord. I saturate our homes. I saturate the live stream, Father Lord, with your precious blood. Father Lord, speak to us today. Father Lord, we want to understand your mysteries. We want to be able, Father Lord, to operate in wisdom, in discernment, and not in ignorance, Lord God, and be led astray by the enemy because of ignorance. So, Father, grant us wisdom. Teach us, Father Lord. Father Lord, lead us, Father Lord, into paths of righteousness, Lord God, for your name's sake. And Lord Jesus, as I commit this live stream into your hands, I'm asking you summon from the four corners of the world all those whom you want to reveal yourself to so that they will repent and come in alignment, Father Lord, with your word so that they will obey you, so that they will listen to you, so that, Father Lord, there will be repentance, Father Lord, and salvation and healing and deliverance, Lord God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Saturate, Father Lord, our minds with the precious blood of your son, Jesus. I rebuke every distraction. I rebuke, Father Lord, every spirit of confusion on this live stream. I rebuke sabotage in the mighty name of Jesus. I rebuke internet problems, sound problems. I rebuke, Father Lord, every demonic and satanic evil targeting against this live stream in the mighty name of Jesus. I decree and I declare that in the name of Jesus, this gathering is holy, this gathering is successful, and this platform is, Father Lord, too hot for the enemy to handle it. And if there is among us any agent of darkness, arrest them both in the spirit and in the physical. Bind them with the everlasting chains of the Holy Ghost fire. Expose them, Father Lord, so that, number one, they will have the chance to repent and come to you before it's too late. And Father Lord, as they are here, Father Lord, rebuke them that they won't manifest the evil here. And every demonic and satanic arrow that has been fired from the kingdom of darkness against us, against the ministration or every affair of the ministration, return it to send up by fire our Father in heaven in Jesus' mighty name. Father Lord, thank you for your presence. Thank you for your Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father Lord, for all that you've done in the past for us, all that you are doing and about to do. Thank you for calling us onto the marvelous light of salvation. We could be in the world serving the devil, but we are in your presence, Lord God. Regardless of the difficulties, regardless of the, the trials, we are in your presence. And that is what it matters, Lord God. The rest, you will fix it, Lord. The rest, you will fix it, Jesus. So we thank you, Lord God. Many times we are too quick to complain of what is going wrong, but we forget that we have received the greatest gift a human being can ever receive from you, which is the gift of salvation. Father Lord, use me once again as one of your many oracles here in the land of the living to, Father Lord, expose the truth and expose whatever it is that the enemy is doing at these last days, Lord God. Use me as a vessel to speak to your children, Father Lord, and manifest your presence and manifest your power, Almighty God. We need you more than ever, Lord God. And we, we cannot do this journey of salvation without you, without your Holy Spirit and the blood of your Son, Jesus, and your Son, Jesus, our King of glory. So thank you, Lord. And we decree and declare together as a ministry, as a congregation, that this live stream is holy ground for the Lord God Almighty. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen, and amen. Precious saints, get to your Bibles, please. We are going to begin. Are you ready? Let us go to the book of Matthew. Chapter 24, verse 24. So Matthew 24, 24. And it reads, For there shall arise false Christs and false prophets, and shall shew great signs and wonders, in so much that, if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Come on now, saints. The word of God is telling us that false Christs will arise. It's fact. It's not a matter of debating. That you can say, oh, sister Dalila, don't think so. No, it is written. The Bible tells all of us believers that there is going to be a great rising of false Christs and false prophets. And they shall do what? Show great signs and wonders. 
in so much that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. So basically, saints, the Bible is telling us that the level of counterfeit that will be on the last days, it, it is going to be so severe that even the very elect, if God does not intervene himself to 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 you know, open things to you and begin to show you things for what they are. You yourself will be deceived. You that are thinking, some of you here that are watching me today, you think that because your pastor is praying for people and people are, are getting promoted at work, great signs where people are, 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 that were in poverty are now rich, great signs that people that were sick are now healed. Let me tell you something. Signs, great signs don't, and wonders, they don't mean that the pastor or the person performing them or the prophet is of God. Oh, yes. Because why? The great sign is that you repent of your sins. That is the sign. You want to know a ministry that is preaching the word of God? Watch how many people have repented of their sins. Because majority of these ministries that you go where great signs and wonders have been performed by the, by the false Christs. People have not repented of their sins. People are still fornicating, uh, engaging in anti-clockwise lifestyles. People are still analyzing. Women are doing the analyzing thing of their children in the womb. They are doing the most. But because you think that the seal of approval from God is signs and wonders, you are still sitting on that congregation, not understanding that you are sitting in a congregation led by Satan, led by demons, and you are eating from the table of Satan. Oh, but sister Dalila, I, God knows I'm faithful. God knows I'm there to worship him and to serve him. But I'm here to give you the bad news. Even the very elect will be deceived if God does not intervene promptly. If God does not intervene in these last days to send some people that are not famous, that don't have a huge platform, God is going to use such people. And God is going to give them an opportunity to reach out to you and to tell you as it is. The devil is giving false Christs a massive platform. And in these platforms, they are teaching you how to be an occultic person. They are teaching you how to operate in witchcraft. How many churches you go and the pastor is telling, if you can see it, if you can see it, if you can, if you can see it in your mind, if you can continue to, to speak it into existence, it will manifest. They are not telling you to go to God with your petition. And if it is his will to grant you that you will receive whatever it is, that God, you have asked the Lord. Because all things that we ask God, we say, Lord, if it is your will. Because that is how Jesus taught us how to pray. But they are not telling you that. They are not telling you to repent of your sin. In fact, they are not addressing your sin because the devil is not willing. It is not the devil's interest to preach repentance. The devil's interest is to preach great signs and wonders, to preach that you can become a millionaire in a year, to tell you that you can marry three, four times and be happy. The devil is telling you, is telling through this false Christ that it's possible to live an immoral life and be blessed. And unfortunately, we have churches that are gathering of witches and wizards and warlocks. And the worst is a person being a witch, a wizard and a warlock blindly not knowing but it is happening majority of the churches that you go the way that even people pray in those congregations it is the same as how people which is pray i'm telling you i saw a footage recently of td jakes that has been accused of participating in freak offs and they call him the power bo bo bottom or whatever it is that they call him but I saw him laying hands on two of the most influential prophets that are out there. Lovi Elias and another one, Java Passion. And he was laying hands on them. And he was giving them a mandate to go out and get, get people for the kingdom of God. What people for the kingdom of God? 
what people but those prof those false prophets are doing great signs and wonders as i understand some people that go to those ministries are getting cars promotions at work they are buying homes some of them buying mansions some of them are increasing financially but guess what they are, they have no share in the kingdom of god they are not partakers of the kingdom of the of the kingdom of christ jesus they are servants of the kingdom of darkness because why they greed has led them to follow these false christs they greed and they lack of studying of the word of god has led them to such a position in life that is why it's important that you and me we check our motives why do we even pray why do we seek the face of god why do we come before god to serve him why are we in the presence of god to begin with is it because we understand that we are sinners that we are wretched sinners and we need the forgiveness of god we need salvation we need to 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 fellowship with god so that god can cleanse us so that jesus can cleanse us and deal with our hearts our souls and our spirit so that why we will be ready for when the trumpet sounds we will be ready to join christ in his kingdom because i'm telling you saints the devil is packaging these pastors these false christs as celebrities if you look at the way that they are dressed the cars that they are driving the way they speak they don't speak like a woman of god they don't speak like a man of god they speak like a celebrity and people are star stricken by them people look at them and they marvel and and they want the lifestyle they want to be like them but they forget that the aim the assignment is to be more and more and more like jesus every day and i'm here to say saints that unfortunately the things that are going on in the church are shameful abhorrent and people forget saints that god is a judge and god is not going to judge the heathens first some of you think when you think about the judgment of god you think that god is gonna judge the earth and is gonna judge the people in the world no saints i have very <laughs> very bad news for you that think like that the bible tells you and me in first peter 4 17 for it is time for judgment to begin with god's household and if it begins with us what will the outcome be for those who do not obey the gospel of God? You will be charged in accordance to what you know about God, what you know about scripture, what you know about the will of God. You're going to be judged. Oh, but sister Dalila, what do you mean? God is going to say, well, this is the amount of knowledge that you have acquired about me. But this is how much you have been obeying. In proportion to what you know, in proportion to your knowledge. This is how much you have been obeyed, but this is the amount of knowledge that you have. I come across Christians that they know everything about the occult. They know everything about secret this and secret that. But when it comes to our you obey the word of God, they lack. But the knowledge, oh yes, they know a lot. They know who's joined this, who's joined that one and joined that one. But the level of obedience and servitude to God, the level of surrendering to God. Surrendering to God means to obey God. It means to crucify your flesh. It means to leave the things of the world behind and leave the flesh, crucify the flesh and follow Christ. And let me tell you something. That is not an easy thing to do. It is not an easy thing to do for you to sometimes have to swallow your pride. For you sometimes have uh, you wanted to say something, but the Holy Spirit said no. It is not convenient for you as a believer to use that choice of words. It is not. It's not for you as a believer to say the things that you are saying. Keep quiet. Zip it. Shut down. Let God speak for you. It is not easy because we are people that the flesh is in constant war with the spirit but god is gonna judge us first he's not gonna go and judge the hidden no 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 the bible says that he will start with us 
So can you imagine the level of responsibility that you and me have? Some of you, you don't understand that the way you dress, the way you speak, even the way in which you leave your home, the way you conduct yourself at work, in your business, wherever you go. You are preaching the gospel of God. You are sending a message out there. By your conduct, by your walking with Christ, or lack of thereof. People are going to draw their conclusions and you either will make people join the kingdom of God or you will keep just Jesus away, people away from the presence of the Lord. Let us go to 2 Corinthians eleven fourteen. I told you be prepared. It's going to be a long live stream. 2 Corinthians eleven fourteen, And no wonder for Satan himself masquerades as an angel of light. And no wonder for Satan himself masquerades as an angel of light. There are many powerful people in the Christian world. Powerful preachers, prophetesses, prophets. They have a good outward image, a good appearance. You look at them and say, wow, these are holy people. But what you don't understand is that their pulpits are altars unto Satan. Satan has told them that, look, you need to look holy. You need to have a certain lengthy skirt. You need to have a, a certain uh, um, a garment. You need to look a certain way because I want as many people to be servicing this altar that I have erected in this pulpit. Some of you, you don't understand why you cannot pray. You others are, are having encounters with the Holy Spirit, having dreams, but you cannot grow in your Christian life. You cannot grow in your altar, in, in your knowledge of God. What, but what you don't understand is that your mind, your soul, your spirit is into an altar that the devil is giving power to certain so-called pastors and men of God to service it so that you will be enslaved to that altar. And no wonder for Satan himself masquerades as an angel of light. That is why I don't care who is preaching, who is sending prophecies and everything. You as a child of God, you should go before God and say, Father in heaven, I am following Sister Dalila and I always attend her live streams. But I want you to show me, Lord, if Sister Dalila sent by you or is she somebody just like Satan himself masquerading and as an angel of light and teaching us doctrines, doctrines of demons. We need clarity. I need clarity, Lord. And if you are a sincere believer, if you are a person that believes God for real, God will tell you either he will give you a dream. He will... Uh, he will show you something that will indicate that hmm, something is fishy about this sister. Something is not right about this pastor. You will know. And as, the, as you continue to pray, and I advise you that even you should fast. God will reveal you who those people are. You see, saints, signs and wonders are not a, 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 a testament, are not evidence that the person is, is indeed a servant of the Most High God. Because Jesus himself, he did not heal everyone. Jesus did not deliver everybody. Jesus spoke in parables. He, he, sometimes he didn't want the message to be understood by all. Simple as that. Some people Jesus healed. Some people Jesus didn't heal. Some, some people Jesus didn't even want to preach the gospel to them. He took his boat and he went somewhere else and he was hiding from such people. So you have to understand that in these last days, Satan will masquerade himself as an angel of light. You, you will go to that church and it's the, 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 the first lady is nice, has a pleasant countenance. The pastor looks holy. But what you don't know are known to you. There is an altar there in that church erected to the devil. And that daughter, and that altar, sorry, 
receives blood every day. And you are a partaker of the satanic sacrifices that are taking place on that altar. Because why? You are in agreement with that ministry. Have you noticed that some of these ministries you have to um, uh, join as a member and you have to follow, you have to write a, a long form. You have to fill up a form and then you have to come and see somebody that will stamp you don't understand that right there and there you are entering with an agreement with an altar. Not all church is saints. But if you have signed yourself, your name on that form, what are you signing? What it is that you are signing to belong to? What it is that they want your signature? They want you to be a member. What is going on? You have to question everything, saints, because this is not the time for you to take people's word as gospel. You're supposed to take the word of God as gospel and that's it. Not what people are saying to you. They gave you a form. You are sign, ev sign everything in there. Sign your signature and you don't understand that you are entering into an agreement. And let's leave the, 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 the things of, the, of, of what is going on with the Christian world. And let us focus now a little bit on what is going on in the secular world. There are certain clubs for you to enter those clubs. You have to pay and put a bracelet. If you don't have a certain bracelet, you cannot enter. And you don't understand that those are agreements with Satan. That is why some of you, although you have left the world, you have you've now became born again. You have to begin to break all these agreements that you once established with Satan. You need to break them. You need to say, Lord, bring back to my remembrance. Every evil agreement I made with your court. Because I was in ignorance. Because I was in rebellion against you. And the Holy Spirit will tell you that that club, that, that, that theater, that show that you went, those tickets that you purchased, God will begin to bring them one by one by one by one so that you can break, 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 break whatever agreements so that you can become that that God has spoken over your life. How, you are how are you going to receive the Holy Spirit of God, receive the blessings of God and the sweet consolation of the Holy Spirit when you are still a vessel for the enemy? You are still very much counted as a member of the occult. I've, I've noticed that many people, because they are now being tormented by demons, they cannot sleep and they have legions. They have many demons tormenting them. Now they want to come to us, the ministers of the gospel. They want to come to us saints and asking them to cast it out. But that is not how it's done. In order for you, a believer, to pray and cast out demons, number one, the person has to repent of their sins. They need to go before God and repent of each one of their sins they've committed against God and renounce the agreements they established with the devil and go back to 50 generations before them of what was done before them. So that then those demons can leave. And it doesn't even stop there. The Bible says that when the demons leave, they've been cast out, they will return to check whether your house, you have now become a temple of the Holy Ghost. And if they find, find you empty, they're going to come back again with seven worse demons. Generation, any kind of curse cannot be broken without repentance. Let me just put it out there straight, plain and simple. Without the repentance, without repentance, there is no breaking of generational curses. Without repentance, there is no breaking of anything. You will still, you still belong to Satan, to his kingdom, and there is always an altar somewhere speaking against you too, because altars they speak. Oh, but Sister Dalila don't understand. Every time. Abraham had an encounter with God. He did what? He erected an altar. We are the same nowadays as that is different now. Your house, for instance, has now become an altar unto God because you consecrated your house to God, right? Your car has become an altar to God because you consecrated that 
car to God. And when you are inside of that car, you are praying. You are praising God. That means that you are servicing the altar. Some of you, your desk where you work at your workplace has become an altar to God. And you service that altar because as soon as you get to your desk, you consecrate the day to God. You anoint your desk. You, you present the day to God and you ask God to be with you at your workplace or wherever you go. But the opposite also applies to the kingdom of darkness. When you are in the world, serving the world and Satan, every day you are erecting an altar. You didn't pray for your food. You went to a certain restaurant. The meal was awesome. You had that meal, but you did not consecrate the meal. So you erected an altar to Satan. And, then, and that altar is speaking against you. You engage in sensual relationships with many, many people, which is against the word of God. And you were erecting altars. Each person that you slept with is, was an altar. And when you look at your life now, you will see that you have so many altars erected that you've erected through the course of your life. You need to go back and break each one of them. Because before Gideon received from God power to be able to defeat the Midianites, he had to do what? The angel sent was sent by God to tell Gideon that, look, it is not because God does not love you. It is not because God does not want to redeem you. It is because God has it's not because God has lost his power. But you cannot fully see the power of God until you go back to your father's house and break the idols that are in your father's house. Once you break that altar of Baal and break the, 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 the effigy, and once you break the altar of Ashtaroth, the goddess, then God will speak for you. Then God will give you power. Then God will empower you. Then God will give you the strength. The reason some of you here are still suffering demonic attacks in your dreams. You have demonic visitation in your dreams. You have dreams that are so diabolical that sometimes you get up in the morning and you are afraid to even begin to pray because you don't understand. I am a believer. How can I have this kind of dreams? And you don't understand that the reason why you are still having those dreams, it is because there is an agreement somewhere and it is your job. It is your duty to fast and pray, to ask God to show you, to give you divine revelation. It is your job to do so. It is not God's job. God heard the prayer of Gideon and he sent the angel to give him instructions. But it's up to, it was up to Gideon whether he was going to follow with the instructions or not. God does not force people, but he will show you. This is what is wrong and this is what you need to do. It is as simple as that. There was a lady that she used to, I, um, she's passed now. And this lady for me was like a second mother. She was my nanny. Right? She took care of me from when I was a baby. My mom had to go to work and she took care of me. And I have very fond moments, very fond memories of this lady. But she left the job to look after me to go and become a witch doctor what we call back home a sangoma. We call them sangomas. And she left. And after many years, the Holy Spirit began to move my mom's heart to find her, to preach the gospel to her. And so my, my, my mother went and began to preach the gospel to her. And she was willing to give her life to Christ. She loved Jesus. She began to attend church. She was very diligent. But there was a problem. Although she had left everything behind, she still had the altar at her house. 
and she was still servicing that altar because she was afraid of demonic retaliation. Until she became very sick with a cancer. She had a cancer. And she reached out to my mom. And she said to her, listen, I know I'm going to go. So I really want to now break this altar, destroy it. I'm ready now. So my mom got some church folk. They went to her house. She had what you like a, a hut with the altar inside and everything that belonged to the altar and the deities that she worshipped. That day they prayed. They burned down the whole thing. And that same day she was baptized, filled with the presence of God. And literally two days after she passed. She's, she's with the Lord now. So I'm here to say to you, you can be doing all these different things. You are fasting, you are praying, which is good. You are reading the word of God. But if there is a certain altar somewhere that you've erected, you are not going to have peace because you still are part of something that belongs to Satan and Satan has the legal right over your life. And let me tell you something. Let me go deeper. Gideon did not erect the altar to Baal and the, the goddess. It wasn't Gideon that erected that altar. Neither it was Gideon servicing over the altar. It was his father and his, his family members. Gideon had nothing to do with it. But because his family was in agreement, he was in agreement by default. That is why you need to pray certain prayers. Lord, I know that some of my family members, tell their names. It could be your parents. It could be brothers and sisters. I don't know. It could be even your children. And you say, God, I don't care what altars they have erected. But today, I confess before the sun, the moon, and the stars. I confess before the earth, the heavens, and hell that I have no part with such altars. I break any agreement. I sever any fellowship in the mighty name of Jesus. And you have to do this prayer every day. And I tell you why. Because every day they are servicing the altars. And they bring your name to it. You know, those of you that are Africans. When they go to service the altars onto the ancestors. And this happens in America as well. The Americans have a worshipping of the ancestors that is similar to what we do in Africa. But you, you pour libation. You will get some Hennessy, get some whiskey, some liquor, and you will pour it for the ones that have passed on on the ground. And that is erecting an altar onto the, to, to the dead. If somebody in your family does that regularly, you will be called onto that altar. You will be called onto that altar that was erected. That is why it's important that you pray every day. Father Lord, any altar erected or are about to be erected by any of my family members that is, is that the devil is trying to use to establish an evil agreement with me. I break it as ever in the mighty name of Jesus. I separate myself and my children from every any demonic altar with the precious blood of Jesus. I bring the blood of Jesus between me, my family and such altars in the mighty name of Jesus. And you should pray this prayer every day. Every day. Because when they go to service that altar and they bring your name to it, God is going to say, the blood of my son justifies this one. This one has brought the blood as an evidence of the severance with any demonic altar. So whatever it is that they are asking demons to do, whatever they are conjuring, it's not going to locate you. It's not going to find your address. And this is real. When they go and present their petitions onto the demons and they begin to name their the lineage, the, 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 the names, surnames. Doesn't matter sometimes. God is so powerful that they will forget your name. They will mention everybody, but they, when it comes to your name, the, 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 the devil will not be able to pronounce your name because your name, pronouncing your name, it will be reversing whatever it is that has been done into that altar. So they won't even utter a word. It, it happens. 
there are people here who consult mediums. Do you know if a person has gone to consult a clairvoyant or a medium or a spiritist about you when you are born again, washed in the blood of Jesus? If they're going to consult such people, when they bring your name, they're not going to be able to see you in the crystal ball. They're not going to be able to see you in the candle. They're not going to be able to see you in the beads, in, in the bones, whatever they used to consult you. They're not going to be able to see you because why? You are hidden in Christ. You are a mystery to Satan. You are under the blood. The devil cannot access you. But for you to live under that grace, under that power, you need to break the agreement with any altar. You say it's Lord, even altars erected by my ancestors that are not here. I break the agreement in the mighty name of Jesus. Let us go to 1 Timothy 4 1 saints. I told you that this is going to be a long live stream. Let us go to 1 Timothy 4 1. The Spirit clearly says that in the latter time some will abandon the faith. And follow deceiving spirits and things taught by demons. Some of our congregations are places for kundalini spirits, demons, to manifest. Be very careful with these congregations that they dance like maniacs, like lunatics. They step, they step, they step like they were in some sort of jazz club. But you don't understand they are possessed by demons they are possessed by deceiving spirits the bible says that there shall be order in the things of god there shall be order in the service of god there shall be order in the things of god how can people be dancing till the point that their wigs fall off their heads the ladies now everybody can see their undergarments that is a demonic manifestation of the kundalini spirits because when you go to hindu temples that is how the possessed people there behave when you go to hindu temples you will see no difference between your church and the hindu temples where they are manifesting demons and the excuse they say is that they fell under the holy spirit they fell under the power of god the power of god is not gonna make you look like a lunatic everybody can see your undergarments somebody has saw your bra you the ladies some of you the gentlemen now you you're drooling and you are and they have to bring something to cover you they have to escort you to one place of, of, of the congregation and you can't remember what happened David danced, but he did not dance inside of the Holy of Holies. I don't care. Come and criticize me as much as much as David did not go inside of the Holy of Holies to dance and strip off his shirt. Because that place was, was only accessed by Levites. David was in the streets dancing and jubilating and strip off his shirt and what to, and listen the, let me tell you something in the biblical um listen some of us we need to go and study history to be naked according to the old testament is not like being naked today that you have no clothes nothing you are just like that if a man took his tunic off and his is is his um is 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 um belt and was only with his inner tunic and his briefs. That was nakedness. Because it's shameful for somebody to see you with undergarments. You are naked. But the standards have gone so low that now naked means naked, naked as naked. In fact, women are not even wearing clothes anymore. They wear undergarments. And they are comfortable in wearing undergarments. Remember the ladies, the, our grandmothers that used to have the sleep dress and the sleep, sleep uh, sh skirt. Now they make shirts. They make dresses. Some people are even buying, telling vintage. The sleep has now become a dress and they put on some heels and they go about their business. 
But back in the days, if you were to see a lady like that, that is nakedness. If you saw your grandmother with those, your grandmother would not even, no child, no grandchild will see grandma with, with the stockings getting ready for church and a petticoat and a sleep and a, and a girdle. and every, It was an abomination. It was not, not something that you would see grandma like that. And the pajamas that they wore at night were thick. They had, you know, and they had a robe to go on top. If you want to understand because you are young, go and watch the, some of the, I don't recommend you to watch the whole thing. But go to Pinterest or go and look for 1950s movies, 1940s. You will see the ladies at night, they had all sorts of robes and then they have a, a, a one on top and they had fur collars and they were covered even to go even at night when why and they had uh, uh, turbans when somebody was knocking on the door at night there was an emergency no one who says oh mr so-and-so mr S mr so-and-so's wife was naked open the door she would have all her garments her night garments But the standards have dropped significantly. There are deceiving spirits in the church that are telling you that it's okay for you to go to church with a certain dress that is transparent. You, the gentleman, your, your, your trousers are so tight. You are struggling to walk on your way to, to the house of the Lord. We know that you've been working out in the gym, but you don't have to bring a, 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 a shirt to church to show to the congregation. It is not our business. Keep it to yourself and God bless you, your, your feet. Hallelujah. Good for you. These are deceiving spirits that are teaching you things from demons. And let me tell you something. The greatest demonic kingdom that is infiltrated the church is the marine kingdom. <laughs> I was watching a lady that she was in the occult. She was giving her testimony all her life. Very beautiful young lady. And she was saying that the reason why God does not answer prayer, especially from the first ladies, is because the first ladies are wearing the Marine Kingdom wigs. These wigs that they are wearing, some of them are from dead people from india these are hair sacrifices sacrifice to idols they go and shave the head to ask the goddess or the god to 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 allow the child to go to university they're asking the god to help them to pay a certain debt they're asking the god to heal the child and these gods do it and when they do it they fulfill their promise as to fulfill their part of the bargain these ladies will go to these indian temples and shave their heads in homage as to pay the debt to that God. And the people servicing on those temples take the hair and sell it to you. You are buying it as a wig. Now you are wearing that wig. You can't even remember why you in the kitchen. What? Why, why, why did you go to the kitchen in the first place? You are having headaches, having evil dreams. You are in places where you don't even understand why are you in that place anyway you you are in foreign lands you see a woman crying and asking you for something and you don't understand what it is that they are talking because some of these women they sacrificed their hair to their god they did not sacrifice it for you to have a wig some of you here are wearing someone else's hair that is witchcraft let me go on to another level of witchcraft. Witchcraft is when you take things that belong to somebody, nails, hair, I don't care, and you use it. But you are using it, using it for vanity. You've bought the, the, the Peruvian, the, the Mongolian hair, the this and the this hair. You have taken another woman's hair to put it on your head. And that, that, is, that, that is witchcraft. I don't care if you want to go, go. You are welcome. But I have to preach the truth. You have taken a hair from other nations. Hair consecrated to gods. Hair of people that worship other gods, other entities. 
And you've entered into an agreement with those gods. That's why that God is, is, is persecuting you day and night. Because you have its hair that belongs to him. The goddess is persecuting you, the marine kingdom, persecuting you day and night because you have the hair with you. It's in your head and you're not even satisfied with one wig. You have seven, eight, ten, ten wigs. And that's why you cannot hear God. That's why you cannot hear the Holy Spirit. That's why you cannot hear the presence of God. You cannot pray. You are confused. You don't know whether you should take the job offer or decline. You don't know whether you should do this and do that. You are now being led and deceived by spirits. And de demons are teaching you because why? The head is, is where your knowledge of God is. And now your head has become... Of, uh, 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 the battleground for you to receive teachings from demons. Some of you, you don't understand that you are now uh, behaving the way you are behaving because there are demonic entities that are controlling your mind. You are not in charge anymore. Demons are in charge. Let us go to 1 Timothy 4, 1, you that are doubting. The Spirit clearly says that in the latter times, some will abandon the faith and follow deceiving spirits and things taught by demons. That is why when I come and tell you about those human wigs from India, from Mongolia, from Brazil, from everything, you get upset. You get angry. You don't want to be here. You are feeling some type of way. Because why? The, the Spirit has already warned all of us that in the latter days, some will abandon the faith and follow deceiving spirits. Some of these first ladies that have this Peruvian hair, Mongolian hair, Indian hair, so on and so forth, they are not led by God. Oh, but Sister Dalila, they are still in church praying, prophesying, and doing things. What did Jesus say on those last days? On those last days. On that day, sorry. They will say to me, oh, but did not we prophesy in your name? Did we not cast demons in your name? Did we not preach the gospel and did this and did that? And God is going to say, depart from me. I know you not. So doing signs, speaking in tongues, doing this, it is not, it doesn't mean anything to God. You can do all those things and still will go to hell. I'm just talking about human hair. And you that like nails, you like to have a nice manicure. The nail does not belong to a person. Okay? It's synthetic. It's a plastic thing. All right? But even the way you do your nails, it should be in a way that is decent and is not demonic because how how are you washing your private areas with these nails this long and then you are using such nails to prepare the meal for your family i'm sorry i'm just i'm just asking i've heard women say oh but we use a cloth and we take that cloth and that is filthy i don't care and there is nothing wrong with a nice French manicure, a French pedicure. There is nothing wrong with that. And if the nails are in decent uh, length, and, and, and that, that is fine. We are not also to be walking like men because we are women. So I'm not going to bring that, that, you know, fa fanatism here. I'm not a fanatic. Okay, I'm not going to preach something that is not in the Bible either. If you are wearing false eyelashes, make sure that the eyelashes are not from human hair. They are synthetic. Okay? So, I want to say this. That some people were saying, oh, these vanity things, all these things that earrings are taught by demons. But you are using a car. To go from to and fro, to and fro. Where, where does that technology come from? The technology for you to have lights at home. This internet that we are using. Don't be a hypocrite, please. I'm not here for that. Some of you oh, don't wear nails, don't wear makeup, don't wear ma this. But you are driving a car. You use the internet. You have an iPhone that has an apple at the back. That symbolizes the fall of, of Adam and Eve. Ladies, wear your makeup.
Don't go to places that then your husband leaves you because you are looking like a defeated foe and he has left you for because you are not looking good. God wants you to look good, but he does not to you to look demonic and he does not want you to enter in agreement with demonic things. Okay? You want to go and do your nails in a nice salon. You want to do your pedicure because you don't want to look like an eagle that has landed somewhere during summer. Go by all means. Do your pedi and do your manicure. But pray. Lord, where should I go? Because some of these salons are altars as well. Sometimes you go to do your nails and you will see a Buddha there at the entrance and all sorts of altars with incense. When you see that, you say, no, sir, this is not for me. And pray, say, God. I want a good salon that I can go and do my hair. Show me where there are Christian ladies that are doing hair, cutting hair. And God will. I have a lady that is a Christian that does hair right here close to me. And when I want my daughter to do some, something different, I go to her. Ain't nothing wrong with that. So don't come here and tell me all sorts of things. Now you're not using roll on because it's the fallen angels that brought it. And don't listen. Even Jesus Christ was given perfume. Some of you don't use roll on. Some of you don't know what it is to have a good perfume so that you don't offend people with your stench. Then when husband left you and wife left you because of your lack of hygiene, you are complaining. Grooming is very grooming is very important. Especially you, especially you young ladies at age of marriage, you want to have somebody in your life, make sure you look good. Because no man is going to look, look, look men are the, when they look at you in church or a, a brother and that likes you or sister, they, they're not going to first say, hey, hey, is the sanctified of the Lord with, with all sorts of things in your mouth because you're not brushing your teeth because you are the sanctified and redeemed of the Lord. You don't use roll on. Redeemed, sanctified and justified by the blood of Jesus, you are still going to be single for the rest of your life because no one is going to put up with that. A, a, a husband wants to look at his wife and see that the hands are clean, manicured, nice, polished, nice. And, and the, it's time to go out. The wife has a nice little something, something to look good. But don't be wearing these demonic wigs. Human things. I'm talking about human things. Human whatever. As they tell you, oh, he's human hair. His eyelashes from human hair. Stay out of it. The brands of makeup, if you see that in the brand there is an all seen eye, there is a pharaoh, there is something like a mermaid, you're not going to buy that lipstick because you already know what time of the day it is. You're going to buy something that you look at it, oh, this is good. I personally, ladies, you want to buy makeup, go buy the, the old school one that was used when your grandmother that is gone to the Lord used to use. Things like Revlon, uh, Max, Max Factor, all those old, old, old vintage brands. These ones right now, when you begin to see some funky God, some, some old sin eye, some whatever it is, stay out of it. You already know that there is an agreement with demonic spirits. Even the clothing, you have to look very close. You don't buy clothing that has um, things that are saying hell, rebel, miss this, miss that. You look is this good for me or not? And ask the, every time you go to any market, you go to the supermarket, every time you go to buy clothes, whether for you or for your children, every time you go to do something, before you leave the house, as you get your children ready to go, you say, Lord, I'm about to take these children to get their school uniform. I'm about to take these children to get some clothes. And I need you, Lord, to guide me. I need the Holy Spirit to show me if there is any occultic thing that we will not buy anything that belongs to Satan. That we will go and get that that is good. And once you've come, you, you, have, you reach home, spread all the clothes, everything, your kitchen count, everything that you have bought for the children, whatever you bought for yourself, consecrate it to God. Anoint the tags. Then put it in the washing machine. Wash it first. And then yes, you are spreading your washing. Pray over it. And you'll be fine. 
But don't be deceived by demons. These demons have now, now we, listen. We don't see any value in ourselves anymore that we can't leave. We can't leave the house looking like, like ourselves. There is a problem. Why is it that we need hair from other nations? Hair sacrificed to idols to feel like we are somebody. That is a question. If we are fearfully and wonderfully made, we shouldn't have fear that today I didn't, I didn't put any mascara on. Today I didn't do this and I didn't. You shouldn't feel like that. Everybody has the unique way. God made you. You are perfect the way you are. Your face, your, your eyes, everything that the, your appearance is connected to that, your assignment. It's connected to your destiny. You needed those big airs to be able to reach your destination here in the land of the living when it comes to your assignment. You needed those big eyes. And that's why God gave you. You needed to be short. You needed to be tall to fulfill that, that assignment. Or else God would have made you tall or God would have made you short. F begin to see yourself as something good. Because some of you, the reason why you are being deceived by demons, you have a very low self-esteem. You look at yourself like a nobody. You look at yourself like you need this, you need this, you need that, you need that, you need that. Just to exist. And that is dangerous. You are placing yourself in a very dangerous position and it's not good. Let us go to 2 Corinthians 2.11. 2 Corinthians 2.11. In order that Satan might not outwit us, for we are not unaware of his schemes. You are to be aware of the schemes of the devil. You are to be ahead of the devil's game or else you are going to be in trouble. This lady that I was telling you that she was an occultist, she, she was a sorcerer, she was a person in the occult. She was saying on her testimony that when they wanted to destroy a congregation, when they wanted to take the anointing of that congregation, put the fire of the Holy Ghost down in that congregation, they will have access to the congregation through the wigs that the ladies, first lady and the rest of them were wearing. Because the wigs were what? A legal agreement. They had something that belonged to the kingdom of darkness. So when they began to pray, they felt headaches. When they began to pray for others, they were feeling sick. Because why? They had in their possession something that belongs to Satan. Something that belongs to the demons that are called gods. In India and in Mongolia and whatever, what else? Some of you, you, you pray in God, I want to stop engaging in sensual immorality and you can't and you don't understand that that week that came from Brazil, that week that came from a place where the per perhaps the person that was the owner of that hair was immoral. You cannot stop sinning. You cannot stop committing immorality because why? That demon that was in that person is now possessing you on a level that is using you the same way was using the owner of the hair and is using you with vengeance because you they had a vessel now they have to get accustomed to you the devil is very cunning how can we allow our, ourselves to celebrate everything how can we allow ourselves to celebrate everything that is mundane and demonic some of you here, I'm struggling with corn. I'm struggling with sensual immorality. But when it comes to Valentine's Day, when they are celebrating the Cupid, when they are celebrating those gods of debauchery, of orgy, and all these different things, you are celebrating. You are buying flowers. You are doing the most. You are going out on dates. And then you want to conquer immorality. You want to conquer evil thoughts. You want to conquer adultery. You will not. Because you and all those demonic things, that belong to satan are together you are in agreement and satan's got you he knows you are powerless but you won't be anymore because today as you receive the, the, the gospel raw and uncut without compromise you will repent the servants of the most high god don't need to look sensual we don't need to look sensual 
You don't need that the dress that is revealing this and revealing that. You, the gentleman, don't need this that is showing your chest. And we are to be holy. Our appearance must be holy. Because you know what? When a person is naked or showing exhibit parts of their body that shouldn't be exhibited, like private parts. Your cleavage is a private, private part. You don't understand that you attract demons. Demons are attracted to nakedness. That is why... You see uh, uh, the wife of a certain singer naked out there in a way that we've never seen it before that we are shocked. Because why? She is doing a ritual. That is a ritual that she's doing of massive possession by people looking at her, lasting men and women, people looking, people, children, they are being possessed. And she's releasing a spirit of filth. She's releasing demons of filth of immorality to this generation. Okay? You need to ask yourself why these people that have so much money, they could buy any dress out there that is f fashionable, that is, uh, you know, beautiful. They don't. They just appear naked. If they are not naked, they're wearing outfits that are so skimpy, so tight, that shows everything. I saw the other day a singer that does her concerts in, in, in swimming suits. And as she was bending over and twerking, you, 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 people could see her private area. It's rituals. That is why. When God reveals to you a witch, a wizard, and a warlock, you will see them in your dream naked. If you dream with somebody naked in your dream, know that that person is already very high ranking in the occult. So that is something to the, the revelation to you as well. What you don't understand, the reason why they come naked, they come sh showing all the, the everything. It is a ritual. They are releasing demons. Okay? They are releasing demons. And by you don't understand, by you going to the concerts, buying the tickets, by you following them, be very careful. Those of you that like to follow celebrities and you are a believer, when you follow them, you have entered into an agreement. That's why some of you here are poor, are always in debt because the celebrity comes and collects the demon that is in that celebrity that collects that, 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 that is connected to that celebrity. The demon that is in the altar of that celebrity comes at night to take your health, your finances, your very strength. Because why? You gave them permission. You are following them on social media. You are scrolling everything about them every day. And you don't understand that by pressing, pressing like and this and following them, you, are, you have already entered into an agreement. So if you are following such people, unfollow them and repent. That is why you see when a certain famous celebrity... Uh, comes to an end, the fans unalive themselves. There is a surge in unaliving of the fans because why? The same way the demon claimed the soul of that celebrity, of that famous person, it will claim the souls of the followers as well. Be very careful. Be very careful. Because some of you, Satan is outwitting you because you lack knowledge. You don't understand that by you following them. By you following them, you are entering into an agreement. By you buying their music, downloading it onto your phone, you have entered in a, into an agreement with their altar. You are servicing their altar along with them. In fact, some of you here, let me give you a reality check. You are the offering upon that altar. That celebrity has said, look, the, the amount of people that will buy, uh, buy my CD or buy my music because there is no CD anymore, saints, excuse me, sister, Dalila is stuck in time. But if you download the music, you don't understand that the celebrity made a deal with the devil. Uh, the more people that download my music, the more people who listen to my music, then the, the, those are the people that you can collect. And some of you don't understand that. Let me go deeper. Some of you here, a certain celebrity, something Yonsei, 
has now a hair care line called Sacred. And if you look at the imagery of the products, there are pillars of ancient Rome, pillars of ancient Rome. Famous pillars that gods of, of the dwelling of the gods. Okay, so she's telling you that she has an altar. She has, she, those products have been consecrated to her demons, consecrated to entities, consecrated to goddesses. That is why the products have that imagery and that's why they call sacred. Sacred means set apart. Sacred means set apart. By you buying her products, buying a hair care line, you are entering into an agreement with the same gods that she serves. And not only them, you have now bought the altar. The, 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 everything that she has on those altars, you have brought it as hair care. Because each um, Im image represents a certain aspect of that god or goddess. And it represents a certain um, uh, aspect of it, the, the, how they want to be worshipped. And how can a woman that wear wigs 24-7 release a hair care line when she is, you don't know her, her, her hair looks like. She's always wearing wigs, but she's giving you a product. And guess what? To go on your hair the minute you buy it. The minute you apply it onto your head, that's it. You have made an agreement. You have entered into a covenant with her gods and goddesses and whatever entities she's worshipping. You have entered into an agreement. I have to tell you, saints, because the Bible says that Satan shouldn't outwit us, the brethren, the believers. We cannot continue to be deceived. You need this knowledge so that you can teach others. Be very careful because the devil is very cunning. He's even in food. Things that we all like, like cookies. Sometimes you're trying to buy flour and, and, and in that flour is a trident. The trident is a marine kingdom symbol. It means that that product has been consecrated to Poseidon, which is a demonic force from the pit of hell that lives under the sea. This is so real. It's not a joke. Let us go to 2 Corinthians 11, 3. I told you, buckle up yourselves. It's going to be intense. We are going to be here for quite a while. 2 Corinthians 11, 3. But I am afraid that just as Eve was deceived by the serpent's cunning, your minds may somehow be led astray from your sincere and pure devotion to Christ. Paul the Apostle was worried that in the same fashion the devil had deceived Eve with his cunning. Somebody cunning is somebody that comes in the dark and when you're not watching. And... Your minds may somehow be led astray from your sincere and pure devotion to Christ. Devil, the devil comes to corrupt your mind, to lead you astray from the sincerity that is in your heart to follow and obey Christ. That is his agenda. And he's looking for an agreement. It doesn't care whether you know it or not, as long as you enter into an agreement with him. That is all he wants. He's not worried about anything else. And some of you, sister, but I don't understand. I'm going to be very, very, very specific. If you've ever bought an alcohol beverage, if you ever drank any alcohol, Okay, you gotten drunk. 
that is an agreement because that is why certain drinks are called spirits. They're telling you that, look, if you drink this, you will open yourself to demonic possession. Some of you that you gamble, you go to Las Vegas to gamble. You go to places, to bars. You like to bring men and women home. You know for what. And because you said in your heart that you love Christ. That you believe in him. You think that that is enough. You think that that is enough. It is not enough. You have to have pure devotion to Christ. It means that you need to be in total compliance, in total obedience to Christ. If you are not, by default, your mind has been led astray and you are now property of Satan. You are now property of Satan. Some of you hear that you are asking God, Lord, I want to be married. I want to meet the person that you have for me. And the reason why that does not happen, it is simply because you have erected an altar through immorality. Where Satan took your glory. Satan took your stars. Satan took your destiny. And now if you were to see yourself in the spirit, you will see yourself wretched, naked, and in despair. Okay. So I'm here to say to you that <coughs> there isn't such thing as Christ consciousness. Somebody saying here, Christ is not a conscience. Christ is God. And is either you do his way or you will be in hell. Buddha can be a conscious because he's a man that came, he, had, he was a philosopher, he had a way of living. But guess what? He died and his grave, you will find it somewhere. Same way for the others that claim to be spiritual leaders that shaped any form of religion. You can go and you find a grave. Here lies the bones of Buddha. Here lies the bones of so and so. Even Father Abraham, even all those. But Jesus... But Jesus has no grave. Jesus is God. Because Jesus said, you've seen me, you've seen the Lord, you've seen the Father. And guess what? If you don't enter through me, I'm the door, I'm the way. If you don't enter through me, you don't have access to God. You want access to God? Make sure Jesus has opened the door for you because if you don't enter through him, you don't, you won't see the Lord. So these are the things that are leading people astray. They think that God is a consciousness. God is a philosophy. They can manifest God. They can think uh, uh, with God consciousness or rubbish, all demonic um, doctrines of demons. So that you will not know how to follow Christ. You will be confused. You will be deceived and you will deceive others. That is why it's important to know the truth. And that is why it's important that you don't listen to any, any person. It is important that you are not deceived. Eve was deceived. Eve knew that God did not want them to... Eat of that fruit, it was forbidden. Can you imagine? They had access to any fruit that you can ever think in that garden. Still, they wanted to eat from the forbidden fruit. Make that make sense. That is what the devil does. He comes to take away your fellowship with God. The devil was jealous that Adam and Eve were living a good life in paradise. He was jealous that they had access to God. He was jealous that they had glory. They had peace. They had everything for them. And he's jealous of you today. Are you not the sons and daughters of Adam and Eve? 
It's jealous of your sweet fellowship with Jesus. It's jealous that you have the Holy Spirit. It's jealous and it makes me mad that you are prospering in Christ, that you are growing in the knowledge. So that's why he is busy promoting certain pastors, promoting certain people to teach you doctrines of demons so that he can come and take your peace, take your finances, take your health, take your children and God knows what else. And he's not going to, if the devil came with horns and pitchfork and say, hi, I'm the devil, you wouldn't go after him. He comes as a nice looking lady. He comes as a well-spoken man. He comes as a very um, um, eloquent teacher. He comes as packaged as all that and more. He's not going to come like he, the, the way he is. If the devil appeared to these celebrities as in his f defeated form, do you think that these celebrities will be led to sell their souls to him? Every person that has sold their souls to the devil, either the devil appears as a white blonde man with a nice sports car and a white suit or as a very beautiful lady never seen before with a nice sports car and in opulence. Just like how he appeared to Jesus in that pinnacle, promising him all the glory and the splendor of the nations of this world if Jesus would bow down and worship him. He's doing it to all these influential people. He's using the same tactics. He's not, he has no new tricks. It is always the same pattern. But we human beings falling for the, for the same tricks over and over and over again. You people, especially the men, you worship your football team more than you worship God. When your football team loses a game, you don't talk to your wife. You refuse to eat. You buy the shirt, you buy the mascot, you buy everything. All the cups in your house are from your football team and don't know. Idolatry. Be very careful. These things as well are agreements with the gods of the Greeks. Because the gods of the Greeks wanted them to go into arenas and play sports and do all sorts of activities in honor of them. Be very careful. Nothing has changed. Nothing has changed. When you go to these football arenas or sports arenas, you shout, you scream, you give all your energy, all your strength, all your might to your team. And what you don't understand is that behind that team, there is an entity that has an altar that is serviced by the football players or the sportsmen and women. And they offer you on that altar. When you scream and shout, you are giving the best that you are to those deities. You are giving all your strength, all your might. And no, you don't stop there. You give them your money too. Because you go and buy the tickets. You buy the merchandise. And when you can't go to the game, you pay for your subscription to unlock the channel for you to watch it. But when you go to church, your wife is telling you, let's praise God. Raise your holy hands. I'm not like that. I don't need to raise my holy hands to show I love God. Continue. But if you go, if I was to see you in that sports arena, your shirt is up to hear you demand because you shout so much. The shirt is wet. has folded into two beats. Your stomach is all out. Some of you, you're so drunk. You come home and when you lose the game, you want to abuse your family. You don't want to eat. These are all schemes from the devil to make you worship him. You don't have to directly go and sign yourself to any satanic temple to worship the devil. He has a system in place that you will worship him at the comfort of your home, in your sofa, in your phone, with the things that you are downloading on your phone that you think that no one else has access. But guess what? God knows what you download onto that phone. God knows what you are watching. He knows who you are texting and why. But because you hide it well, you think that, well, it's not demonic, it's not satanic. It is. 
Let us go to Ephesians 6, 11. You that are beginning to feel like, but God, what can I do? I'm confused now. Let us go to Ephesians 6, 11. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the, dev the devil's schemes. The Bible is telling you and me that the devil has what? He has schemes. He has designed society in a way that we, as we leave the house, we sin daily. The outdoors, where they have all advertisement, naked women, even to sell milk. The women are made naked. Breasts are out. Society has made it so acceptable that people just are walking around almost naked. When it's any public holiday, people are, are in clubs, doing the most in those clubs. The devil has designed it all to make it easier for people to worship him. But the Bible is giving us a weapon against him. It says that put on the full armor of God. Sister Dalila, I don't understand. So that you can stand against the devil's schemes. You need to have an armor. If you were to see yourself in the spiritual world, you will see yourself as a warrior. You will have a breastplate. You have an armor, a sword, have a helmet. And how do you armor yourself in God against the devil's schemes? By knowing the truth. A person that does not, the truth, not know the truth, does not know the tricks of the devil, will fall for his schemes. If you know how to identify all his trickery, all his schemes, you are not going to be a candidate for whatever it is that he's doing. He's not going to have your cooperation because you know something that others don't. You know how the devil moves and you know how his people move. The devil has his people in places as well. That's why some of you apply for a job. You go for the interview. But once he goes to the HR department, the lady there is constantly saying to you, Oh, come next week. Come another week and you don't understand. Why is it that I qualify? I pass the interview and yet this lady is giving me trouble. Every day she has a new demand. This man every day is asking me to bring this and to bring that. And you don't understand that the devil has people in institutions, in positions of leadership to oppose believers especially those believers that have a heart for God you begin to be attacked but today put on the full armor of God know that you are a powerful believer when you pray when you are praying you are at your peak in terms of authority you know what the Bible says let me give you revelation. The Bible says that God said to Abraham that he would do what? Enlarge his coast and his territory, right? In the spiritual realm, there is territory. And the more territory you have acquired in the spirit, the more level of authority you will have against principalities, rulers of darkness. That is why sometimes you are about to take in new territory in the spirit. Demons will begin to attack you. People will begin to persecute you. The devil will attack your finances, your health, attack your children, attack your property because you are gaining territory in the spirit. You are enlarging your coast, your knowledge of God and not just your knowledge because knowledge is not sufficient without appliance. If you have knowledge, but you don't put the knowledge into practice, the knowledge is without effect. All right? You have to have knowledge, but know how to apply that knowledge. And as we believers, we, we get knowledge by reading the word. And we apply the knowledge by doing what? Obeying the word and operating in that knowledge. That means that we are willing to even teach others if need be. If God um, gives us an opportunity. All right? That is fundamental. Let us go to Leviticus now 26. Leviticus 26. I will set my face against anyone who turns to mediums and spiritists to prostitute themselves by following them. 
and I will cut them off from their people. Sister Dalila, I don't visit any of them. I don't know any mediums. I don't know any spiritists. And I don't prostitute themselves by following them. But you are following that prophet that is telling you to go and get this, do this, get a cloth, put it underneath your bed. He's telling you to pray seven times and jump some sort of broom. You are following a prophet that is not led by the word of God, is not led by the Bible. His principles are not biblical, but because he's promising you that you will break through, that you will overcome, you are following them. What you don't know that you are following mediums and spirits disguised as men of God and women of God. No different. But God is going to judge you though because you were given knowledge to identify mediums and spiritists so that you wouldn't prostitute yourself. But because you are so desperate for breakthrough, so desperate to be rich, so desperate to have a house, so desperate to get married and have a child, you did not get, you did not check the credentials of the pastor, the, the woman of God, the man of God, the so-called prophet and prophetess. You didn't care to check the credentials. So that's it. You prostituted themselves with them because why? You didn't care to test the spirit. You didn't. You know those people that because the advertisement looks good and it looks promising, they don't care. They go and surrender themselves to whatever authority, whatever it is, for little comforts. Just because it looks good, it smells good, it does not mean that it's not poisonous. Hmm? You see? A food can smell good, look good, but then when you eat it, it will poison you. Because poison was concealed in that food. Some of you, you don't care to even ask God, Lord, I'm going to this church. I'm following this live stream. But I don't want to be following things that you don't give me permission to do. I don't want to be in environments that you have not, not that, 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 that are not of you, Lord God. Gatherings that are demonic just because I'm desperate. To get a job just because i'm desperate to get married just because i'm desperate to conceive a child i don't want to fall in the hands of the devil because i need a certain breakthrough i don't want to be led by false prophets the devil knows that if somebody's advertising themselves as a medium and spiritist you are not gonna go because you you are a, you are a believer but what he will do though he will tell the spiritists and the medium to disguise themselves as a prophet and prophetess. He will tell them to disguise as pastors. And you might be asking, but Lord, how am I going to know? It's very simple. When you go to a church, the first way to test the spirit is, are they preaching repentance? Are they very persistent in repentance? Are they very persistent in speaking that Jesus is coming back? Repent of your this, of your that, of your that, of your that. If you go there with that spirit to test them. Because they are doing altar calling. They are telling people to bring 10, 15 envelopes to give this and to give that. But they are not telling the people to repent. They are not telling the people that curses cannot be broken unless you repent. Not only for your sins, but for the sins of your ancestors. Know that you are in very dangerous territory. You are in very dangerous territory. Run for your life. Because what spirit is in that congregation that the pastor is not telling the women that are half naked that look, this is not how you serve God. The pastor, the, 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 the prophet is only giving out prophecies. You're going to be rich. You're going to get a job. I see you crying and I see you coming out of that situation. And I, don't get me wrong. Some of them prophesy accurately because why? The devil knows you. He's following you 24-7. He knows that you cried at night. He knows that you only have $5 in your wallet because he's the one causing the poverty in your life. The devil knows all these different things. He knows. That is why 
they they can prophesy accurately but if they know they're not addressing your sin if they are not telling you that you are in sin and for as long as you are in sin you are an enemy you are the enemy of god and god cannot intervene in your situation remember what i was saying to you before about gideon Gideon was not the one that erected the altar to Baal and to the goddess Ashtaroth. Gideon was not the one even servicing those altars. His father was and his family members. But because the altar was in his house, because the altar was in his territory, because he was a part of that family, God had to send an angel to say, listen, Gideon, I heard your prayer. I'm the same God who wants to deliver you, that wants to restore your dignity. I'm the God who wants to break the curse, but you will not break it until you go and destroy and break that altar. It will not happen. So Gideon, Decided to do what? Obey God. And he got himself in trouble, didn't he? The whole of his family came against him to kill him. And his father said, no. If Behal is Behal, let, me, let him come and avenge himself that my son destroyed his, his image, his effigy. And let the goddess come and avenge. And if God is God, he will fight for my son. Wasn't that so? Hmm? So you that are here, but God is unfair. Why should I pay for the sins of my father? No one is telling you to pay for the sins of your father. Sister Dalila is here preaching to you that you need to repent on your behalf and your behalf of your ancestors. And you need to break the covenants. I'm like that angel. Angel means messenger. <clears throat> I'm like that angel that went to Gideon to tell him what was the problem. And not only that, how could we resolve the problem? How could he tackle the problem how could he resolve the issue and it was resolved but you don't want to hear the truth that you 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 are in rebellion against god because of your sin that you need to repent not only on your behalf but on behalf of your ancestors okay you don't want to hear that you want to go to pastor so and so prophet so and so a prophetess so and so to give you quick fix there is no quick fix with god doesn't exist quick fixes quick quick fixes and shortcuts is speciality of the devil is speciality of the devil it is not of god let us go forward since i told you today is going to be intense Revelations 21 8. Revelations 21 8. But the cowardly, the unbelieving, the vile, the people who are alive, others, the sensual, immoral, those who practice magic arts, the idolaters, and all liars, they will be consigned to the fiery lake of burning sulfur. This is the second death. God is saying here that he has no part with all these people who practice all these different things. And let me go, let me tell you some, the cowardly, you know what that means? You know the truth, you know what God requires from you, but you will keep it quiet. You will not tell people of their sin because you don't want to fall out with them. Your relationship with certain people of your family is more important than you falling out with them because you are telling the truth. You are going to hell as well. So stop thinking that, oh, they're on this and they, listen, the Bible starts with what? The cowardly. You know how to follow God. You know how to be a witness, but you, you coward. You, you are a coward. You won't stand boldly anywhere to proclaim Jesus as your Lord and Savior and to tell people, look, I used to drink, I used to fornicate, I used to be involved in magic and these things, but I've given my life to Christ. My life has new meaning and I want to tell you if God changed me, if he did it for me, he can change you, he can do it for you as well. You don't want, you don't want any of it. You don't want to, you just... The only time you mention the word of the word Jesus is when you are alone in your room. 
You are what we call an undercover Christian. No one knows that you are a believer. No one knows. And you see Christians out there preaching. You see believers out there correcting, preaching, but you won't follow them. You won't share their life. You won't share their, their video. You won't support them in prayer. You have the means to support them financially, but you won't either. That is the cowardly. And therefore, when you are a coward, you deny the power of God. So you will not be efficient against witches and wizards and warlocks. Anyone who comes and takes what is yours, bewitch you, take your mind captive, they will do it because you are a coward. A coward cannot operate in power and cannot operate in the power of God because they are denying the power of God. They are in, in hidden, in the occult. Let us go to Luke 8, 17. Luke 8, 17. For there is nothing hidden that will not be disclosed and nothing concealed that will not be known or brought out into the open. These are the words of Jesus. Some of you hear that you say you love God, you worship God, but you cannot get rid of those crystals that you have in your home. You are still using the crystals because you are afraid that if you get rid of the crystals, as God tells you to, that you are going to be powerless against the forces of evil. God is going to expose you. You that you confess to love Christ, but you are in adultery. Low key, on a down low. Doing things that if it was to be brought into the open, you will never have a reputation ever, ever again, unless God intervened. Repent. Because you're not going to be able to continue to, be, to conceal your sin anymore. God is going to put you in a spot, all of us. That we are not going to be able to conceal our sin anymore. It is going to become impossible. Because God will, will do it. You that are low-key low key hating others. When you grow into, go into your prayer closet, you don't go there to spend time with God. You go there to pray against people because you don't like them. Because you don't like the fact that God is blessing them. And you are praying against them. Some of them you won't forgive. Some people you won't forgive them. They did something and they can't even remember what it is that they did against you. And instead of you saying, brother, sister, listen, that day you offended me. You did something that, look, I did not like it. So that you will give the person an opportunity to, uh, to, to, to sincerely apologize to you. No, you took that and you are praying against that person. You are praying for them to, to be unalived. You are praying for them to be poor. You are praying against them. That that you are praying, it will be brought into the open. Because that is not the God we serve. Everything that you've been hiding, thinking that it's never going to come out, I can assure you that it will come out in Jesus' name. I can assure you that. The things that you do when you are alone, the content that you access with your phone, the things that you indulge yourself in. The things that you watch when no one is watching you. The things that you do when no one is watching you. They are going to be brought out into the open by God himself. So if you are a wise person. You say, Lord, before you bring all my mess to the open, I repent. Because I don't want to be exposed and, and be ashamed in public. So I'm now bringing all my dirt all my sins, myself before you. I'm not hiding anything. I'm here today to repent. It is better to do that. Then all of a sudden wake up one day, everybody knows about your mess. It's not nice. Luke 12, 3. Let's go, saints. Luke 12, 3. What you have said in the dark will be heard in the daylight. And what you have whispered in the air, in the inner rooms, will be proclaimed from the roofs. Again, the same thing that Jesus is speaking. Whatever you said, 
whether in prayer, whether to somebody you confided, you said something, you whispered something in someone's ears, it will be proclaimed from the roofs. It's not going to be a secret anymore. Everybody will know. So it's time for all of us to come before the Lord humbly, before he exposes us, because judgment will start with us, the house of God, the church. It's time for us to say, God, I cannot continue to uh, hide my sins anymore. I'm tired of hiding my idolatry. I'm tired of hiding my sin, my immorality. I'm tired of hiding everything that I'm feeling. I'm bringing all before your holy throne, Lord God, in repentance. I'm tired of being a hypocrite. I'm tired of being a coward, Lord. I don't want you to expose me in public. I can't handle the shame, Lord. So I'm bringing my dirt before you. This is the time. Today is today, saints. And that goes for me as well. Let us go to Ephesians 5.11. Precious saints, Ephesians 5.11. Have nothing to do with the fruitless deeds of darkness, but rather expose them. When you see... In front of your eyes, fruitless deeds of darkness, but you don't expose them, you are in agreement. You can identify that this, this is of darkness, but you don't speak up. You don't say anything. You are in agreement. Whether you like it or not, but sister, uh, uh, it's not that I'm in agreement. I'm afraid of losing my job. I'm afraid my sister will not speak to me again. I'm afraid this. I'm afraid I will lose friends. I'm afraid. Listen, if you are not saying something that this is wrong, you are not reproving, you are not refuting, you are not rebuking that. You are in it. We expose things by doing what? Speaking against them. Every time you are speaking against something, you saw a program, you said you were watching sometimes, for instance, I could be watching something with a friend or family members and I see something that is darkness. I says that guy there with that pentagram and this and that, those are Satanists. Those are people that sold their souls to the devil. Those are people who are following Satan. Those are people that are led by the devil. Whether the people like it or not, whether the people like it or not, whether they want to speak to me or not, again, it doesn't matter. I've exposed what I saw. I exposed. That means I have let it out in the open. In other words, I have no part in it. And I've made it clear, clear and crystal, crystal clear to everybody that look, I have no agreement with it. I'm exposing it. Now, what you are going to do with the information that is your business, but you can't come after me, that you are in hell burning and you didn't hear the truth, that you can't accuse me of. And the reason why you have to denounce evil publicly, you have to call a spade a spade in public. You have to tell people what is what. It is because the judgment will begin in the household, in God's household. God is going to hold us accountable. But look, you had so much knowledge of scripture, of biblical truth, but you just stay there silent. You did never, you never confessed me in public. You never told people about me. Now I'm judging you because you had so much knowledge, but you, what, what, you did nothing with the knowledge that you acquired. You kept it to yourself. Come on now. The Bible says, 1 Peter 4, 17, For it is time for judgment to begin with God's household. And if he begins with us, what will be the outcome for those who do not obey the gospel of God? Let me go deeper in something that is happening now. Judgment has started in T.D. Jake's house, the potter's house. God has publicly judged T.D. Jakes. And I tell you why. God has exposed T.D. Jakes. That is a false prophet, a false teacher. And not only he has judged T.D. Jakes by, the, by exposing him 
to the Christian world, but he has been exposed in the world. He has no reputation anymore. His sister Cora that has taken children from mothers that were manipulated by her to give the children. She's taken the children by force. She's been exposed. His entire household is being exposed. Because judgment begins where? In the house of God. But let me be more profound. Who was he in fellowship with? With Didi. But look at what is going on with Didi. They want to arrest him now. He has fled to Antigua, an island in the Caribbean, because he wants, he doesn't want to be, um, doesn't want to be judged in his own country for his crimes that are all out in the open. But guess what? Judgment begins in a household, God's household. Did Jake's sons has, have been exposed for being anti-clockwise? <laughs> Them freak offs, they're all exposed. They're not only that. Now God is exposing the entire thing. Who was there? Who did what? At what time? It's all out in the open. And let me tell you something. God will use the wicked against the wicked because 50 cent is not innocent. How comes he had all this knowledge all this time and only now he's speaking? Because God has loosened his tongue. So don't think that one, because one celebrity is exposing another that they are not guilty of anything. They are all the same bunch. They are all the same. He is not a watcher. He's just a partaker. But God will use anyone. God will use anyone because he's God. But that doesn't mean that he doesn't have his own involvement. Yes. Just because he's not doing some of the things doesn't mean that he's not doing other things. And always remember this in witchcraft and in the occult. When they want to bring new gatekeepers, they have to bring down the old gatekeepers so they can promote the new ones. That is how it works. When they have new gatekeepers that they want, the devil wants to put in place, they have to take down the old gatekeepers. That is how it works. Whitney Houston was a replacement for Phyllis, Phyllis Hyman. And they try to replace Whitney with Jennifer Hudson. They always replace. The devil always replace. Diddy is too old. And he has no influence with the youths anymore. He was relevant in the 90s to corrupt that generation up to early 2000s. But he's too old now. The devil needs new blood. This one called Tyler from South Africa that is singing water, water. She's the replacement for Beyonce. Beyonce has reached the, the, the end. The devil needs to put some new blood in. Those are the rules of the game, Sister Lorian. You know what you know. And I know what I know. Thank God for that. Open your eyes. Stop being too thinking that, oh, hey. Um, what's his name? Cat Williams exposed. Cat Williams was wearing... The will of drachma as a necklace. That means that there is a full circle of the marine kingdom that has reached its peak and needs to run a new one. They need, need new gatekeepers. They need new blood in and they're recycling the old trash with the new. Same thing with Epstein. That old Hollywood producer and everything, they needed new people and they've already put them in place. Watch how this one that sing, this Tyler that sings Water, Water, which is a homage to the Marine Kingdom. Watch how she soars in fame and power and everything. They always have replacements. So stop thinking that because so-and-so said something. Sometimes you know why they're speaking against Didi? Because they want his gatekeeping position that has now been made available. And they are willing to do anything for that position. And they are ready. They are just, 
indicating to the uppers, to the elites that look, I'm willing to fill, fill in this vacancy. So stop being deceived. The devil cannot fight the devil. A person that has left the occult or left these societies, they will never join again. You will never see them and they will be exposing it. The reason why you see them coming out, exposing and everything is because they want to be the new gatekeepers. They want to be the new people in. That's all it is. Let us pray, beloved saints. I told you it was going to be a long ministration. And we are now going to stand in prayer before God. I felt led to bring this ministration today. For the simple fact that we have new people always coming in. And they don't have much knowledge. And it's important that you are remind, reminded of God's commandments, that you are reminded of God's perfect will for your life and that you stand your ground as a believer to honor God, to worship God, to serve him wholeheartedly, especially on these last days. The world is not again going to get better. The world is going to get worse. And if you want to survive what the devil has put in place for the children of disobedience, you need to be strong in your knowledge of God and you need to be obedient to God. This economical crisis that we are now facing in the entire world, where the prices of eggs and everything are so exorbitant that people are barely affording a meal every day, it's only going to get worse. But if you are a believer and you have been trusting God, God will protect you and God will feed you even in the midst of economical collapse. The world is about to collapse economically, physically, because look at the disasters that are happening. I didn't tell you anything because I didn't want to panic, but the city where I was born, where my mom lives, was underwater, half of it. Destruction everywhere. Majority of the people that I know back home have lost their homes are underwater. Life investments, gone. In Maputo, Mozambique, the, one of the worst floods ever. But by the grace of God, my mom's car wasn't harmed. It's a miracle. Her, how, her apartment was not harmed in any way. She's okay. If we want to escape the, the calamity, listen, what you see now is just the beginning. If you want to escape, invest all you are and all you have in the kingdom of God. Spend time in the presence of God. Allow God to speak to you. Allow God to give you divine direction. Because some of us, God is going to say, put money here. Buy this. Don't go there. You need to be a person that God has freedom to come and direct and shift. But you are not going to be able to operate under that grace if you are disobedient to God. You are just going to be swept, swept away. God promises to take care of us. Everybody else won't be able to make an omelette, but you will have omelette in your home. I speak that over your life in the name of Jesus. Everybody else will be facing certain plagues because they are releasing some plagues to claim half of human beings. On this earth. But you won't be a candidate to. The plague shall not come near your dwelling. As it is written in Psalm 91. The Bible says in Psalm 23. That the Lord is your shepherd. You shall not want. Your children will not want. You will not want. But if you want to be able to live under that blessing. Repent of your sins. Come to Jesus. Tell him. Lord I did this, 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 this and that. And as far as I know. So my parents and forefathers, but I'm coming to you, Lord, not to cover my sin, but to uncover my sin and to ask you for forgiveness. And you said that if we came to you confessing our sins and with honesty, you are faithful enough to forgive. So I'm standing by your word and your promises. 
And then you are the righteous of the Lord, walking the land of the living. You will never lack. Even if people try to mistreat you, abuse you, take advantage of you, or do whatever. They won't be able to do it because God will fight for you. God will lift up a standard for you. I've seen it. Some people came to destroy me, destroy my family, destroy my property, destroy my th many things to cause me harm and pain. And they are sent by the devil. But the Lord has kept me, has kept my family. And when I look around and I think, wow, had not been for God, I wouldn't be here. My family wouldn't be here. Look at what happened to my mother back home. God protected her. And not only God protected my mother, but God protected her property. No matter how many guards she had to guard whatever, she wouldn't be able to protect her, 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 her things the way God protected. Let us pray, precious saints. Abba Father, King of glory. Father Lord, you are our heavenly Father. You are the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. And without you, Father Lord, we cannot eat, we cannot drink, we cannot breathe. We cannot pray. We cannot do anything without you, Lord. Our very source of existence, Father Lord, is, is, is established in you, Lord God. You are the Ruach Kodesh in us. You are the breath of life in us. You are the bread of life. Father Lord, you are all and everything to us. And without you, Father Lord, we, we are not going to be able to make it, Lord. When we look around and we see the devastation that is upon this land, the wickedness that is multiplying daily, the lack, the scarcity, the poverty, the infirmities, the plagues, the rising cost of living, the rising cost for simple accommodation. Father Lord, we know that if we are to survive in the land of the living, we are going to have Father Lord to be faithful to you, Lord God. There is no way we can make it, Lord God, without you. If you don't guide us, if you don't direct us, if you don't watch over us, if you don't protect us, Father Lord, we will be destroyed by the enemy. So, Father Lord, we humbly come before you, Father Lord, as we are in this season of Passover, Lord God. As we are reminded of your love for us. As we are reminded of the sacrifice that was made available for us on that cross by your son, Jesus. So that, that today... We could be free from sin and condemnation and shame and moreover from eternal damnation. Father Lord, we thank you because you could have called other people that are more beautiful, more handsome, more intelligent, more academically brilliant. But you called us, Father Lord, in our many imperfections and in our sin. You had mercy and you extended your hands of mercy because the Bible says you will have mercy to whom you want to have mercy. Father Lord, you decided to show us mercy when we don't deserve it. We are not better than the ones in the world. We are not better than the ones that sold their souls for gain and fortune and whatever it is. We are not better than them. The only thing that distinguishes us from them is your saving grace, is your mercy, Lord God. And it's because of your Holy Spirit that we are able to shout, Abba, Father. It is only because of the blood of Jesus that we are able to walk in righteousness. It is not our own doing. It is not our own capacity, but it's your power in us and is your willingness to keep us in the straight and narrow, Lord God. Father Lord, we are not here to vanglory ourselves because we know that if we can practice righteousness, if we can read your word, if we can pray, it is not our, by our own strength, but it's by your power. Is by your might, Lord God, and is by your mercy. So, Father, today we come before you to acknowledge our sins, to acknowledge our iniquities, to acknowledge all the wickedness that we have committed against you, Lord God. We are not hiding anything because you said in your words, Lord Jesus, that whatever we try to hide, it will be exposed anyway. It will come into the open. So, Father, Lord, we surrender our hearts, our souls, our spirits, Surrender our entire beings today into your hands and we repent. Not only for our sins, Lord God, but we repent on behalf of our forefathers. We ask you also for forgiveness for our children. Some of them are adolescents now and making their own choices. Some of them are adults. They are able to make their own choices. 
forgive them, Lord. Forgive us, all of us. Be merciful, Abba Father. And whatever it is that we are still doing that is shameful, disgraceful, and is a sin, we repent, Lord, and we, we don't want to return to our vomit. We are tired of living like a defeated foe. So, Father, Lord, we pray. Comfort our hearts. O Lord, establish us in every good work. O Lord, establish us in every good work. O God of peace, sanctify us wholly in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, Lord, let our bodies, souls, and spirits be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. In Jesus' mighty name. Let us be filled with the knowledge of his will. In Jesus Christ's name. Let us be filled with all wisdom and spiritual understanding in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, Lord, help us to walk worldly of and pleasing to the Lord in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, Lord, make us be fruitful in every good work in Jesus' mighty name. O Lord, increase us in the knowledge of you. Father, Lord, make us be fruitful in every good work. Father, Lord, whether at work, in our ministries, jobs, businesses, whatever, Lord God, even in our own homes, in the mighty name of Jesus. O oh Lord, strengthen us mightily. Father, Lord, let us be filled with the spirit of wisdom and understanding in the knowledge of Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, Lord, let our eyes and the eyes of our understanding be enlightened in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, Lord, let us be strengthened with might by his spirit in the mighty name of Jesus, in the depths of our inner man, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, Lord, let Christ dwell in our hearts by faith in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, Lord, let us be rooted and grounded in love in Jesus' mighty name. O oh Lord, let us be filled with all of the fullness of God in Jesus' mighty name. O oh God. Help us to comprehend and the breadth, the length, the depth, and the height of the love of Christ in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Let the word of the Lord have free course and be glorified in us in Jesus' mighty name. Let the Lord of peace give us peace in all areas of our lives in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Let utterance be given unto us. To make known the mystery of the gospel in Jesus' mighty name. O oh Lord, perfect what is lacking in our faith. O oh Lord, perfect your good work in us in Jesus' mighty name. O oh Lord, make us perfect unto your good work in Jesus' mighty name. O oh Lord, enrich us within all utterances and knowledge in Jesus' mighty name. Let the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with us always in Jesus' mighty name. Father, Lord, inject into us your spiritual vitamins that will make us spiritually healthy in Jesus' mighty name. Father, Lord, inject into us spiritual vitamins that will boost our appetite to eat your word in Jesus' mighty name. Father, Lord, inject into us spiritual vitamins that will boost our appetite to eat your word every day in Jesus' mighty name. Father, Lord, infuse into our blood spiritual Vitamins that will produce hunger and thirst for prayers in us in Jesus' mighty name. Let God inject into our, us spiritual vitamins that will clear our vision and strengthen its clarity in Jesus' mighty name. Lord God, inject into us spiritual vitamins that will sustain us in evil days in Jesus' mighty name. Lord God, inject into us divine immunity that will always kill spiritual germs and evil deposits in us in Jesus' mighty name. Lord God, inject into us the spiritual energy that will make us tireless, tirelessly with you in Jesus' mighty name. Lord God, feed us with the foods of the champions. Lord God, boost our energy to run the race set before us in Jesus' mighty name. We receive henceforth the comforting anointing and the power of the Holy Ghost in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We receive the unsearchable wisdom in the Holy Ghost in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. We take the shield of faith to quench every fiery dart of the enemy in Jesus' mighty name. We run into the name of our Lord Jesus, which is a strong tower, and that we are saved in the mighty name of Jesus. 
Father Lord, always make us to drink from your everlasting well of joy in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank God. Father Lord, we thank you for the spirit, new spiritual height that has just been lifted, Father Lord, in us by Christ Jesus. Father Lord, we thank you for your presence. We thank you for your anointing that breaks the yoke of the enemy. We thank you because you are perfect. You are merciful, O oh God. You are the God of second chances. You are always extending your hands of mercy and forgiveness to your children, O oh God. And today, we won't let go of your garment, Lord God. We won't let go of you today until, Father Lord, you have fu fully transformed us, Father Lord. Because that is how much hunger and desire we have for your presence, Lord God. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen, and amen. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. There is a person here you have like an oracle. It is like a paper, like a book, and it has like some uh, dices that you throw and then ask questions. And you follow the book so that you can interpret what's in those dice. It's like an oracle. But God is saying that that is divination. That is a sin before God. If you really want God to reveal things to you, you want to have a relationship with God. You have to leave behind Satan, his kingdom, and the things that be belong to Satan. You are consulting with demons about your life. Demons will never guide you to your purpose and to your destiny. And God is extending to you an opportunity to repent. Write capital me and destroy that oracle that you have. It's like a book. And then you do certain things and that you'll get answers. Certain things will move and, and then you will get answers to whatever it is that you consult. I can see you consulted that, consulting that oracle frequently. But God is giving you an opportunity for you to repent. Write capital me. Write very quickly. Write capital me to repent. You're going to have to get rid of that oracle. And rely on God for your source of strength, for answers. You cannot go to Satan to consult about your life. You are not a servant of God right now. For you to become a servant of God, you're going to have to repent and get rid of that oracle that you are consulting about your life. And God is extending to you an opportunity to, for you to repent. Write capital me. The Bible says that the day you hear my word, do not harden your heart. Those are the, the words of God. The day that you hear the word of God, the gospel of God, his truth, do not harden your heart. If you don't destroy that oracle that you are consulting, what will happen to you is that you will end up in hell in the afterlife because you are using the devil to consult about what the devil is doing. It will never end up well. You are deceived. Demons are manipulating that book for you to consult and not God. So you need to repent. Write capital me. You that you have like an oracle, it's like a book. And there is certain, I can see that there is a dice and some other things that move when you are asking a question. Write capital me. I'm not condemning you here. I had to repent myself. To come to Christ and God is ex exchanging, extending that same grace to you today. Now, don't think that you can repent tomorrow because tomorrow is not promised to any of us. We could be here today and tomorrow we are not. Or because the trumpet sounded, Jesus has come to judge the living and the dead. Or because our journey here has ended and God has required our soul in judgment. Then what? You despise the day of salvation of the Lord. You, did, you didn't want to surrender to Christ. You can't complain that God has not visited you. You can't. You simply can't. So write capital me and repent. Stop consulting oracles about your life. The devil can never give you answers. Only God has the answers because only God knows your beginning and only he knows your end. And only God can guide you to your end. The devil can't. 
write capital me to repent get rid of that oracle that you are consulting and you are asking that oracle to give you answers about finances about relationships about work everything you are relying on that oracle jesus loves you and is here ex extending his hand of mercy to you don't delay the day of salvation don't let god wait do it immediately write capital me and come to jesus it is never too late for you to come to jesus Somebody said, I used to consult mediums until I knew it was sin. Now you don't. You are a new creation in Christ. Hallelujah. And I praise God for you. But there is somebody here that needs to make that decision. You consult with these mediums. Mediums means a channel for you to connect with an entity to get answers to your problems. That is a sin. And if you don't repent and you confess your sin to God, somebody says, I repent. Forgive me, Lord. Hallelujah. When you repent, write capital me. When you are called, write capital me. Okay? That is how we do it on this platform. Glory be to God. You that you are repenting. May the good Lord continue to strengthen you. And as you have confessed your sin before God, that he will, re he will forgive you as you repent in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God bless you for writing down hallelujah thank you jesus forever beautiful says i dispose all of the witchcraft tools i had and i repented last week glory be to god god is working hallelujah there is a person here that you have a painting in your home you are a lady and it's a very demonic painting of a goddess and god is saying that that painting is a legal agreement with the marine kingdom you're gonna have to get rid of that painting and the reason why you like that painting is because it's afrocentric in its nature the goddess there is wearing braids and is adorned with colorful cloths and you think that there is nothing wrong with it but god is saying that is a legal agreement by you having that painting in your home you are in agreement with this entity, with this deity. And for you to break the agreement, you have to get rid of the painting. Write capital me. Write capital me. And when people come to your home, they keep telling you that when they look at the painting, it's like the thing in there is alive. It's like it's looking at them. Write capital me. And you have that in your living room. Come on now, write capital me. You have that in your living area. So when I see that you live in a house and when I enter through the door, it's in that corridor that leads to the living room and you have that painting there. Write capital me. Write capital me and repent. And as you repent, get rid of that painting and destroy it. Don't resell it. Destroy it. Okay? Destroy it and sever the agreement with it. Say, Satan... I enter into an agreement with this painting, but I'm breaking it off now by destroying it. In the mighty name of Jesus. Come on now, write capital me. Don't waste God's time because God's time is precious. If God is calling you, identify, write capital me and do what God is telling you to do. You are not here to please man. You are here to follow God's instructions. We are not here supervising over what you are doing. I'm here just to showing you to, to to give you what god has given to me for you to follow instructions cooperate with god no one is here to judge you or pass judgment against you but you need to get rid of this painting because the, as long as you continue to have that painting in your home you will forever be in covenant with the devil that means that even when you died you are not going to inherit everlasting life you will be property of the, the devil even in hell. You will be there tormented by demons. So write capital me to repent. And it's not going to stop there by you identifying yourself writing capital me. You're going to go and get rid of the, of the painting. You're going to destroy that painting. I don't know how you're going to do it, but the Holy Spirit will give you wisdom as you go along. 
but identify. Write capital me. Do it very quickly. Don't wait until tomorrow. You might not be here. We all might not be here tomorrow. Some of us might, perhaps the Lord will rapture us into heaven. Come on now, write capital me. Write capital me very quickly. Write capital me. Why is it that you want to repent and come clean before God? Write capital me. You know that you have this painting in your home. It is a lady adorned with a colorful like a dress, but it's different colors. And the eyes are very, like, they're, they're very expressive. It's like looking at a person or it's like he's looking at, at, at you or the person that is looking at the, 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 the portrait. It's not me who is sending you a message. It's a scam, okay? I never send message. How can I send message when I'm ministering the word of God? Unless it's AI that is here preaching to you. Write capital me, you the lady that you have a painting in your home. It's like a goddess. Has braids and is Afrocentric in his nature. So it's like one of those has braids. I see has braids and some, some crystals. Confess. Write capital me, destroy the painting. Destroy that portrait. It's demonic. And the reason why you're suffering and you cannot fully be in the presence of God and commit to God, it is because you have an agreement with that deity because of that portrait, because of that painting that you have in your house. Don't leave this live stream without confessing it to God. You're not confessing it unto men. You are confessing it to God. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah, Father. I pray that the person will confess, the person that has that demonic painting, Lord God. Let the Holy Spirit convince them that for as long, yes, get rid of it, okay? Get rid of it, okay, Sister Ayanda? Get rid of it. Break it and destroy it. It is demonic. That's why I said Afrocentric in its nature. He's talking about that Afro. That painting is demonic. You need to get rid of it. Okay? It's an agreement. Okay? Some paintings, there are mediums for demons. That's why you look at them and feel so realistic. It is not just talent. Demons can attach to paintings if the painting is demonic. All right? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. There is a person here, you have like a fungus infection in your foot. And I see you, you always wear socks. And that no matter, you have gone to many doctors for fungal treatment and still it's getting worse and it's not getting better. And you can't go anywhere without socks, whether it's summer or winter. You wear socks because the fungus is so bad that it's, the skin looks like it's cooking. And it is a point that now has a smell that is not very pleasant. Right capital me to receive your healing. God has located you where you are, has seen of your affliction, has seen your sorrow, having to deal with that infirmity. And because he is a forgiving God, he is a merciful God, he is healing you. Right capital me. To receive your healing today. Many people have had come here. And God touched them and they are healed now. They send testimonies that they are healed. Don't go without your healing. Just write capital me. I can see that you even wear those half socks. I can see you with the half socks. You know those socks that they're not. They're like summer socks. And it's a white. It's white. And I see your foot. I will never send you messages on TikTok. I'm here preaching the word of God. They are fake. Yes. The fungus. Is it you, Sister Shazia? If it's you, receive your healing. Is it you with the fungus infection? When I say foot, I say everything, you know. 
Food is everything. It comprises your, your toes. And you let it receive your healing, beloved sister. God has seen that infirmity and he's the balm of Gilead. I speak the blood of Jesus over that infirmity and I speak healing in the mighty name of Jesus. You are healed in the mighty name of Jesus. When you come back, you will come back to testify that the fungus has dried and died just like the, 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 the fig tree in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. For this wonderful ministration so far, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus, for the healing of your children and much needed repentance, Lord God. For the salvation of, of mankind, Lord God. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen, amen, and amen. Is there anyone here that you would like today to accept the Lord Jesus as your Lord and Savior right now? capital me is there anyone here today you heard the gospel and you heard this long ministration and you would like to confess the lord jesus as your lord and savior you would like to establish a covenant an agreement with jesus christ today all you need to do is write capital me to accept the lord jesus as your savior write capital me don't leave this live stream without jesus Come on now. Life without Jesus is not worth living. So write capital me to accept Jesus as your Lord and your Savior. Write capital me to accept Jesus as your Lord and your Savior. Don't live without Jesus. Don't live without the Lord. This is the day of salvation is today. It is not tomorrow. Tomorrow is not promised to us, so write capital me to accept the Lord Jesus as your Savior. Write capital me. And as you write capital me, you are making an agreement with Jesus. You are entering into a covenant, a pact with Jesus. All you need to do is write capital me. Hebrew girl, you are welcome in the mighty name of Jesus to the kingdom of Christ Jesus. Heaven Rejoices, Hebrew girl. Angels are shouting your name in heaven. There is great celebration in heaven. Because you decided to leave the world, abandon the world and Satan to live for Christ. Hallelujah. God bless you. Best decision you've ever made in your life. And if there is anyone else that would like, like to join Hebrew girl and the rest of us, Ben Nelson, you are welcome, beloved saint. Heaven rejoices, my beloved saint, beloved brother. What has taken place is that Jesus has completely erased your name from the book of hell and eternal damnation. And he has written your name in the Lamb's book of life. And as ambassadors of Christ Jesus, in here in the land of the living, we welcome you in our midst, including you blessing from God. And BBZ, four souls for the kingdom of Christ Jesus. Now that you have fully accepted Jesus as your Lord and as your Savior, you need to begin to live a life of righteousness. And you can only live a life of righteousness by crucifying your flesh. That means that you are going to Leave the world and the sins of, of this world and the things of this world to fully commit to Christ. So you cannot go back to that that you were doing before. Such as lying, cheating, sensual immorality, adultery, fornication, addictions, witchcraft, idolatry, going to seances, consulting omens, consulting uh, clairvoyance. Committing all sorts of abominations and lying and stealing and unaliving. You can't go back to that. You have to have a commitment with Christ from henceforth. And you have to become a student of the word of God. Once you begin to meditate on scripture daily. You will be less prone to go back to your sin. To go back to your vomit. And you will not be manipulated by Satan and his kingdom. Because 
a person that is constantly reading the word of God is a person used by God, a person that the Holy Spirit speaks constantly through the word of God. Hallelujah. Develop a lifestyle of constant prayer and fasting and begin to pray asking the Lord, Lord, I would like to be baptized in the water and I want you to, to order my steps. Sister Beverly, as you confess your sin, the Lord will forgive you in Jesus' name. He's faithful enough. Glory be to God. And now that you have confessed Jesus as Lord and Savior today, begin to understand this one thing, saints, that you cannot go back to your vomit. You are in this for eternity. Okay? If you would like to join us Mondays to Saturdays because you would like to grow in Christ and you want to be able to have an, a congregation every day where you can learn and grow in Christ, you can join us every day Mondays to Saturdays from 1 to 2.30 p.m. United Kingdom hour. Google that time zone and see what time it will be in your, in your country. Just like how Sister Cheyenne has um, pinned it for us, okay? And I would like to also invite you to subscribe to, to our YouTube page because the YouTube page will provide a plethora of old live streams that I'm sure they will bless you and help you to remain in Christ. For you to have access to our YouTube page, Kindly go to my bio, please, and you will see there the YouTube icon. And as you subscribe, may the good Lord bless you and continue to uplift you. And it will be good that we connect. So if you can follow this page, like, um, share the live, share whatever, you are contributing for the furtherance of the gospel. You are evangelizing for that matter. Um. Be mindful of scammers that will send you messages asking you for money. Okay? I will never do that. You will never get a message from me asking you for anything. If you want to give to help with the furtherance of the gospel with this ministry, every relevant information is on my bio of how to go about it. And you will see there the PayPal um, information. And if you sow a seed into, into this ministry... The Lord God Almighty himself will arise from his heavenlies to remember you as well, to bless you, to increase you, that you will always have seed to sow. Because the Bible says that he gives seed to the sower. He will make sure you never lack. Make sure that everything that you have invested in the kingdom of God, that, he, that, that the Lord will cause an abundance in your life as well. Precious saints, we are celebrating our Passover week. So Holy Communion will take place tomorrow. I am reminding you again to have your matzo bread ready and also your grape juice. It's going to be wonderful, saints. I want to also say this. Continue to pray because... We are the generation that we are either going to see the rapture, the sounding of the trumpet, or the Antichrist. We need to be ready, okay? And being ready, it means that we are going to have to focus on God. Sometimes I see even the devil tries to shift, shift my focus to worry. Same time, my sister, forever beautiful, so I'll be here from one Onwards, 1 p.m., okay, United Kingdom Hour, London to be more precise. You will find us here. I've, I'm always happy to tell you that for 15 days, our live streams are going to be longer, okay? Because the kids are off from school and I have plenty of time to be here and teach you properly. It's going to be meat. You're going to be fed meat. And we're going to pray and we are going to learn together in the mighty name of Jesus. So precious saints, let me pray for you before you leave. I think all the announcements have been made clear to you about this ministry, how to find us, all that kind of stuff. 
So, Father Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, thank you for this successful ministration today. Thank you for the lives of my brothers and sisters that join me today, Father Lord, in fellowship, to be in your presence, to seek for your presence, and to, to, to just to be here to learn from you, Lord God. I thank you for their lives. And as they live, Lord God, let them live filled with your Holy Spirit. Let the weight of the glory, of your glory, Father, Father Lord, overshadow them. Father Lord, fill them with your presence. Be a wall of fire and of protection around thy servants. Father Lord, I'm asking you arise from your holy throne and supply each one of their needs, each of their needs, according to your riches and glory in the mighty name of Jesus. I cover them with your precious blood and I pray deliver them from all evil. Father Lord, open doors that no man can shut and protect them from the darts of the wicked one. I pray for the moderators, Lord God, that you will continue to strengthen them that you continue to give them wisdom, that you will uplift them, Lord God, as they serve you, Lord God, in this vineyard. Father, Lord, I pray, take care of each one of their needs. Father, Lord, do something amazing for them, Lord God, and open doors that no man can shut for the moderators and deliver us all from all retaliations from the kingdom of darkness. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen, and amen. Glory be to God. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, I'm asking you today to remember the faithful tithers and givers of this ministry, Father Lord. You have a promises to all those, Father Lord, contributing, Lord God, and working, laboring, toiling for the furtherance of the gospel. Father Lord, I speak over their lives. The, Malachi 3.10 and all the blessings of Abraham in Deuteronomy 28. So remember, Father Lord, without any delay, beloved sister Lori Nobles Gray, family members Anthony Cade and JC Nick, Daddy Leo Laterica, Sister Geraldine Collins, her husband Alfonso, Sister Roberta Davis, Joanna Victorino, Folly Budrix, Marta Sam, Brenda Pizarro, her son Kevin, Selena Bradley, Janet Thompson, Antoinette Fleming, Jade Wekun, Tuana Watson, Jasmine Mitchell, Tyron Harris, Veronica Quayle, Terry White, Anisa Gale, C. Michelle Johnson, Karen Lewis, Natalie Rael, Magdalene Kowalska, Byron Dumas, Myrna Bonilla, Carolyn Chambers, Kita Miller Cole, Jewel Sample, Rikita Walla, Parents Raymond and Renova, family members Ken, Keisha, Kelvin, Kaylee, Cameron, Leighton, Britt, Lorian Baker, brother Andrew Apostolou, Dolores Edwards Harding, Elaine Todd, Janelle Grant, Rose Beber, Martha Sam, Ravina Collins, Jacqueline Bogle, Sheila Ray, Carolyn Wastnant, Titi Toure, daughter Abiba Tu and her parents, Latosha Quintabam, Just King J. Leila Ibrahim, Chantel Small, chosen for such a time as this, Simone Morgan, Michelle Wallace and husband Wade, Antoinette Lewis, Natasha Fogel, sons Jordan and Junior, mother Minnie Benjamin, Asila Preston, children Tristan and Ryan, our products, China Greenlee, Mama Hurley and brother Craig White. Almighty God, everlasting Father, King of Glory, Jehovah Jireh, Father Lord, let Malachi 3.10 be activated in the lives of your children. Rebuke the devourer, the canker worm, the grasshopper, Lord God, in your children's finances, Lord God, in their pockets, right into their source of income, at their jobs, businesses, ministries, in their homes, Father Lord, concerning their appliances, their utility bills, Father Lord, in their automobiles, Lord God, Father Lord, rebuke the devourer in, the, in, 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 in every project that they have, Lord God, in their bank accounts, saving accounts, credit cards. Father Lord, I'm asking you today, arise from your heavenlies and render them fully open unto thy servants and shower upon them such a blessing that they won't have enough storehouse to contain it. Father Lord, I speak over their lives, Deuteronomy 28 and all the blessings of Abraham. 
They are the head and not the tail. They are above and not beneath. They shall lend to many nations, but borrow from none. That means that they will never be in debt. Oh, yes, Lord God. Father, Lord, they are like the palm trees planted by the river banks. They shall yield its good fruit in season and out of season. Meaning that in times of economical difficulty, they will rise above all the expenses of life. Father, Lord, they will never lack. They will still live in abundance in the mighty name of Jesus. They are like the house on the hill that cannot be hidden. Their gifts shall continuously make room for them and bring them before great men. In Jesus' mighty name, Father Lord, I pray, enlarge their coast, enlarge their territory. Clothe them, Father Lord, with a mantle of excellence. Father Lord, activate unmerited favor, open doors, divine connections. Oh, Father Lord, I pray that today, Lord God, as they are here, dispatch from the four corners of the world, Lord God, their destiny help us to locate them and bless them, Father Lord, according to your will and purpose for them in the mighty name of Jesus. Father Lord, I speak over their lives that as far as the sun is from the earth, so shall poverty, limitation, stagnation, lack of achievement, reproach, famine, infirmity, shame, disgrace, delay be far away from thy servants and their tents. Father Lord, I speak over their lives. That, Father Lord, the ailments, the sun, the moon, the stars, Father Lord, the wind, Father Lord, all the elements of creation will bless them, Lord God, because the Bible says that the sun will not scorch you by day, neither the moon by night. The elements will cooperate for their prosperity, for their advancement, Lord God, in Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen, and amen. Almighty God, I'm asking you today, Visit precious sister Lashonda Brown, Tamisha Brown, Tarmisha Hayes, Shimori Chanel, the Christian Women Fellowship, Denise Henry, Erin Jones, Brent, Mother Brenda and Elijah, Elizabeth Tadis, daughter Sarah Oguto, Stacy Cunningham, Karen Lewis, Janelle Grant, Teresa Azinj, Denise Henry, Natalie Nyundu, husband Musa Toure, children Hussein and Hussein Toure, Kelvin Calix, Angela Maria Stolda, Brenda Togo and her family, Mrs. Erin and her household, Percy Marshall, Jalisha Siemens, Patrice Batiste, Nisi B, Doris, Kasai Films, Cheyenne Furtado, Kasai and Eilani Daniel Elang, Lesinga Holcrom, Toya Thorpe, Salmon Luris, Nyembezi Gululu, Tanya Barush, Christopher Birch, Giovanni Holland, Keshni Kirsty, Rashon Stanley, Ketchi Kamara, Kim Lehman, and C. Michelle Johnson. Almighty God, King of glory, everlasting Father. Father Lord, fulfill your promises to thy servants according to Malachi 3.10. Rebuke the devourer, the canker worm, the grasshopper in your children's finances. Father Lord, write into their source of income, in their pockets, bank accounts, saving accounts, even credit cards, even where there is a student loan. Father Lord, rebuke the devour and the canker worm in their homes. Father Lord, with the appliances, the utility bills, the, in the automobiles, Lord God. Father Lord, and open the floodgates of your heavenlies, Lord God, and bestow upon each one of them such a blessing that they won't have enough storehouse to contain it, that their lives will never be the same again. Father Lord, I speak the blessings of Deuteronomy 28 and the blessings of Abraham over their lives. Enlarge their coast. Enlarge their territory, Lord God. Father Lord, I pray that when, Father Lord, you will bless those who bless them, but you will curse those who curse them, Father Lord. I speak over their lives, Deuteronomy 28. They are the head and not the tail. They are above and not beneath. They shall lend to many nations, but borrow from none. When the enemies come against them one way, they shall flee seven ways from the face of thy servants, because that is the inheritance in you, O Lord. Father Lord, they are like the palm trees planted by the river banks. They will never wither. They will never dry. They will yield its good fruit in season and out of season. They shall grow like the cedar in Lebanon. Father Lord, I pray that there will be no limitations to your children's prosperity. Father Lord, money will touch money in their bank accounts. Father Lord, they will rise above all the expenses of, 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 of the economical situation that we are facing. 
Father, Lord, I speak abundance that the cup will overflow and run over as it is written in Psalms 23. Father, Lord, that you will give it back to them. Good measure. Press it together. Running over all that that they have sown into this altar, into this ministry, Lord God. Father, Lord, arise from your heavenlies and that let there be a response, Father, Lord, that they will not just prosper financially, but they will be well in their health, that the infirmity will never be near your servants and their dwelling. Father, Lord, I speak academic brilliance into their children's education, Lord God, a curse of a curse in their lives, poverty, limitation, stagnation, lack of achievement, reproach infirmity, a curse, need, a curse, Father Lord, every want, a curse, Father Lord, stagnation, in the mighty name of Jesus, I speak healing, I speak restoration, I speak abundance, I speak the peace of God that surpasses all understanding, I speak over their lives, Father Lord, that there will be a response from your heavenly courts, that you will do justice to your servants, that you will open doors of employment, that you will open doors, Father Lord, for habit that you will open doors for the Lord for business opportunities. Father Lord, clothe them with your mantle of excellence. Father Lord, let unmerited favor be upon them. Father Lord, connect them, Father Lord, to the great and mighty. Oh, Father Lord, they are like the house on the hill that cannot be hidden. The gifts shall continuously make room for them. Father Lord, I pray that from henceforth, Father Lord, you will do wonders in your children's lives, that they will come back to testify that indeed the Lord is good all the time. Amen. Amen and amen. Beloved saints, shalom sh and have a wonderful day. May the good Lord bless you. May he continue to shine his face upon you and be merciful unto you. And as you go, remember, you are more than a conqueror in Jesus' name. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. And if God is for you, who can be against you? God bless you and have a wonderful day. And... I'm praying for you, knowing that you too are praying for me.